the other information would still be on your phone ending in 5421, correct? Well, that information stayed on my phone. I just took those strings off and provided them to the Mass State Police. Right. So where's your phone? I do not have that phone anymore. You've destroyed that phone, haven't you? No, I threw the phone away. Well, that's destroying <laughs> the phone, isn't it? Uh, I had every right to do that. I didn't ask you about your rights. I asked you what you did. Objection. Sustained. You destroyed the phone by removing the SIM card. Ah, correct? Objection. Sustained. The attorney Lolly's like, ah. Oh. Pull the SIM card out? Objection. Did you pull the SIM card out of your phone? Honor to the, uh, Your Honor, to the best of my recollection, if, if I did take the SIM card out, I would have, if I was, when I threw it away, if I was going to take it out, I would break it or cut it. But I did not wipe the phone. I did not take anything else off it. But if I was going to throw the phone away, that's what I would have But done. did you, though? Okay. You know, as an ATF agent. With... <laughs> Anyways, this is how we're going to get started today. Wow, wow, wow. Friday was such a rich day in court there was so much that happened and this video is going to be very exciting we're going to cover a lot today uh the bombshell at the end of friday's testimony was brian higgins saying i threw my phone away and look at how he gets so rattled when the judge is asking him he's like honor i, I mean your honor uh if i would have uh, maybe should have could have uh threw it out maybe but but you did though. So like, what did you actually do, sir? So anyways, guys, hello, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I started watching the testimony of Brian Higgins and I thought he was doing great. I said to myself, wow, this guy's actually not what I expected. He got emotional when talking about his sister uh, passing away. He got emotional when he was actually referencing Mr. John O'Keefe's children, and it was a side of him that I appreciated because his voice cracked and it was very genuine when he was speaking about them uh, in the stand. Now, as his testimony continued, I felt like the direct examination went really well for the Commonwealth, and he seemed to be straightforward. Uh, his face was uh, very, you know, normal. I didn't find many things. Uh, interesting about his body language or any sign of deceit or anything like that. A uh, little, maybe a few things uh, very small that I pointed out in the direct examination, but very important to remember. Uh, I don't know if he's lying or not. I don't know what the actual, you know, what the, what the truth is of the, the story here. All I know is that sometimes when he's asked a certain question, he may answer in a way that may uh, show some type of body language and we have an explanation for it. Now, is it hundred percent correct? Of course not. I don't know uh, what the truth is. So I just out of curiosity and for entertainment, like to point these things out and I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, as the testimony continued, we get some juicy text messages that really surprised me. I had no idea that people did that kind of stuff. I mean, Okay, maybe I do know, but seriously, Karen, like she's the one that started this. The guy's like, why are you texting me? How did you get my number? Like, of course, he's going to be interested, you know, even though uh, she was dating his friend, which he should have probably said, listen, this is not appropriate. I'm going to block you right now. But he looked at her. He was like, well, this lady, you know, maybe kind of like a little bit out of my league. And I'm going to say I am here for you. Babe, that's what he called her at one point. I mean, juicy stuff coming out. I thought Karen was just like this wonderful lady from what we are seeing the trial so far, right? That helped with the kids. And she, the only flaw she had was to care too much and give the kids all these gifts and take them to Starbucks and to get their nails done. But no, the first, the first opportunity she had she's texting one of john's friends like hey you know i'm just trying to check my options no 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 that's not that's not appropriate never appropriate you know the friends are not appropriate just leave them alone there's plenty of other options in life to go after your boyfriend's friends please lady but 
it doesn't stop here. As we continue and we think, okay, now the Commonwealth is doing great because these text messages do not look good for Karen Reed, cross-examination comes and Mr. Alan Jackson is on fire. He comes in throwing bombs and he's just like non-stopping. And Mr. Higgins gets rattled at the cross-examination. We find out a lot about what he actually did and I can say it's very suspicious, very suspicious. We just watched a little part of him talking about his phone and how, you know, he threw it away. He didn't destroy the phone. But guys, remember, Mr. Brian Albert already testified that he also got rid of his phone right before the court ordered them to maintain all phone records. So it is suspicious to say the least. We have a lot to go over. I am so grateful that you are watching. Please support the channel. I'm just starting out and I appreciate your support. Let's get started. You were just going to watch his baseline and how he responds to facts, you know, like his name, what his profession is, and how his posture begins and his body Anytime language. Ready, he seems a little nervous, hey, but nice uh, posture. Good morning. Good morning. Straight forward. Please state your name and spell Looking your last at the name. attorney. My name is Brian Higgins, H-I-G-G-I-N-S. Yeah, and, uh, where I can you say there? that. Bonstable County, Massachusetts. And uh, how long have you lived there? I've owned that property since uh, approximately 2018. And uh, do you work, sir? I do. What do you do? I'm a special agent with the United States Department of Justice, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Boom. And, uh, how long have you been doing that? Just over 15 years. Now, sir, prior uh, to that, uh, prior to... Okay, so we can pause here. Uh, very normal posture, normal, you know, you're, you're in an uncomfortable position to be uh, testifying at a trial. Of course, nobody wants to be in that position. But overall, I thought he did really well throughout the whole direct examination, especially when they were going over the text messages, because, you know, it, it does show that he was kind of holding back. So he puts him in a position of, let me get this out. Like, I want to, I want the world to know that I wasn't the one going after her and all of these things. Now, the first thing that I noticed uh, as far as body language goes, you know, that he does uh, a little weird uh, is when he's talking about the alcohol. He's talking about um, drinking and the fact that he moved the car because he said, I knew I would be drinking alcohol and we have a policy against that. And then he does a hung jot, like <laughs> he's going to do a lot of it. And, you know, the, the usual explanation for that uh, is it could be something that he just does. Right. But the body language explanation for that is that somebody gets, is getting away with something and then automatically the subconscious mind does that little tongue out thing. Uh, then the thing that I, I'm pointing out here on my slide is that he's a special agent, right? He knows there's a policy against drinking and he's going to be drinking and driving and he's going to admit that he drank, he was drinking and driving. Now she's being charged of manslaughter while operating under the influence of alcohol and all that we have heard so far in the trial is that she was holding a clear glass at the bar, like a clear, a glass with some clear liquid in it. Could have been uh, club soda, could have been vodka, could be, you know, whatever clear liquids there are in the world. But they haven't really proved with any type of testimony, even from the bartender who served her that she was actually drinking alcohol or that she was learning her words or that she was drunk or anything like that. But either way, let's take a look at this video where he talks about the drinking and the policy and he does a little tongue jut for us. But, you know, I knew I would be consuming alcohol and we have a policy against that. So we got that, right? Let me just do it one more time. A little bit slower, and we're going to see the tongue jut again. You know, 
I knew I would be consuming alcohol and we have a policy against that. Now, as far as... Uh, okay, so that's the first talk that, that uh, we see, it. which again, you know, it could be like, I, I got away with something. And in, honestly, this makes sense in this scenario, right? Because he's talking about, yeah, I, you know, I knew I would be drinking, we shouldn't be driving, and he knows he was driving later, so... Now, this one is going to be a video that shows where he's describing his car and he's going to describe the, the snowplow that he has in front of his Jeep. He's going to do a little tongue jut again. I don't know what does that mean in this context. And it seems like he's doing a little bit of a duper's delight, which is kind of like a smile. I picked the wrong finger here. Kind of like a smile just with one little side of the of the lips here on the right side side uh and i have this little baby cute baby which is like a body language from a body language book showing what it would be like the half smile is also called duping the light and is used to describe when a person tries to get away with something out with someone or gets away with the light uh getting away with something again the the tongue now i don't know what he could be getting away with here because he's just simply describing there's no plow but Let's see in context how does the video show what he's saying. Seven Jeep Wrangler, gray in color, and at the time that I was driving it on the 28th and the, the 29th the next day, it had a plow on it. And the plow that you had affixed. Let's go back one more time in slow motion and see if we catch this again. on the 28th and the, the 29th the next day it had a plow on it and the plow that you had affixed to the jeep smile or is that tongue um that was it that's all i wanted to show you guys let's see the next got to the hillside how long were you there and how long was uh, mr Alvin? So I had something to eat. I had something to drink. Um, the approximate time, um, maybe an hour or so. And then Brian had left before me. I remained. He left. And if you know about how long before you left, was it that, that Brian Albert left? Can you repeat that again? Sure. Brian Albert left before you, correct? Yes. About how long before you left, was it that Brian Albert left? Maybe 15 minutes. And uh, you had some drinks at the hillside, is that correct? I did. And do you recall what you drank that night? Usually what I drank all the time, Jameson and ginger. <coughs> and as far as where Mr. Albert was going, what if- Okay, so for this one, we just wanna take a look at this little bite to the side that he does here, like, you know, I don't know how to do it. He's like doing the bite down. And he also does like, um, I think a little bit of a tongue in the beginning, but you know, why is he doing that? Because he's talking about the drinking again, you know, so the direct really, uh, is showing little things that makes him nervous because that is what that is. The little biting of the lips, uh, is being nervous or anxious. And the context is that he's talking about the drinking. So let's take a look at this slide with the explanation for the body language. People sometimes bite their lips when they are worried, anxious, or stressed. You recall what you drank that night? Usually what I drink all the time, Jameson and ginger. Uh, and as far as where Mr. Alba was going, so that was the biting. And now this is a very interesting clip. Uh, the prosecution is going to ask him what his relationship with John O'Keefe was like. He's going to say, yeah, he's, he was a friend, normal. Okay. When he asks about what about your relationship with the defendant, Mrs. Karen Reed, his face does all the things. So let's take a look at what his face is going to do before we watch the clip. 
He's going to say, consider her a friend as well as he itches his face. Touching your face, your cheek is a way to pacify yourself when you're nervous, irritated, or concerned. He's going to do a little bit of a mouth retraction to the side up like that, which is maybe contempt. Could indicate contempt. I don't, I don't want to say it is. Uh, it's a, a mouth retraction where the lips go up to the right side. And then he's going to take a deep breath and adjust his posture up, which could suggest that that's like a relief or fatigue or anger, right? You're trying to get yourself ready for the next question here because, you know, it's a delicate topic to talk about her. Now, this is the slide that, you know, is going to describe one by one what his reaction is going to be. And now we're going to go to YouTube and watch it. Um, so if I could take you back, um, let me ask you this. As far as, uh, through, how would you describe your relationship with John O'Keefe? I considered him a friend. And uh, how would you describe uh, your relationship with Ms. Reed? I considered her a friend as well. Um, now, through the course of, of time that you knew them, did you have occasion to... Um, get their contact information did you see it did you see it did you guys see it yes so that's what happened to his face now we're gonna take a look at the jeep okay the jeep situation where the attorney the prosecutor is going to ask him where the jeep was and where did he park when he went to the the fairview home af fairview home after the waterfall bar you know the night prior to mr john o'keefe uh uh, passing away. So he's going to ask him, where did you park? Now, interesting enough on this one is that Mr. Higgins is going to describe to the T where he parked. He's going to say where the front was, where the back was. He's going to say, this is exactly where I parked my Jeep. When the cross-examination comes and they ask him, where did you park your Jeep the, the next day, the following morning, he's going to say like, I don't remember, which is very inconsistent, right? Because either you have like this perfect memory or you don't. Or if you only have the perfect memory for certain facts, it's a little suspicious. So let's take a look at this next slide. So here we go. We have the picture of the house. Uh, we have where the mailboxes, if everybody can see them, I don't have a little pointer that I can point to, but the mailbox is right there where the back of the Jeep is. He's going to make, um, he's going to point the laser in the screen and we're gonna see that he's going to say the front uh, of the Jeep was around the edge of the driveway. The back of the Jeep was right where the mailbox is. The passenger side was to the right of the house. And he is going to say uh, the front of the Jeep was facing the flagpole where there's a street there. He's going to say that he came to the house. He arrived a little bit before Brian Albert and his wife. So he wanted to be uh, like, you know, to play around with them. And he started to sweep the driveway with his plow, which I don't know what kind of joke that is, but that apparently is a joke. Then he parked and he went into the house. So let's watch the clip where he's going to describe in detail where the car was parked. Three parts. So the, the back end of the Jeep would have been right around the mailbox itself. And the edge of the driveway is right there. I, I wanted to make sure that I was not blocking the driveway or blocked in. Okay. And, uh, so the front of your vehicle would have been pointing in which direction? I believe that'd be going towards Chapman Street. And so this part of your vehicle was the closest. I'm going to make this uh, part a little bit faster because there's no, not really any body language. So the passenger to watch side here. would be um, closest Just to see how detailed he describes this part. Yes. Oh, you can take that down. Thank you. That was it. That was it. Uh, so you arrived at the house. Uh, you did, um, That was it then with the Jeep. So. Just remember that because when the cross-examination comes and the attorney asks him about where he parked the next day, he's going to be like, I don't remember. Uh, he's going to ask him, were there any cars there, Any anybody in the driveway? He's going to say, 
I don't know, maybe there was a cop car. And this is the morning where Mr. O'Keefe was found and the police was there. There were EMTs, firefighters there. It's just an interesting fact, right? Now, let me see one more thing before we get to the text messages, which is the best part of the direct, is this question. The question is going to be about Colin Albert. And he's going to be asked, do you know Colin Albert? He's going to say, if he walked in here right now, I would have no idea. But then his body does something also. So let's. And I know that he is one of the sons of uh, Chris Albert. Are uh, you familiar with what he looks like? If he walked in here right now, I wouldn't know. You would not know? No. Um, and beyond the people that you've described as far as seeing at 34 Fairview Road. Interesting where these tongue juts come up at. And interesting that the definition of that is maybe you're hiding something. Maybe you think you got away with something. So if you missed it, we're going to play one more time. Well, the name and I know that he is... Slow motion is always entertaining. Of, uh, Chris Albert. Oh, let me make this bigger. Are you familiar with what he looks like? If he walked in here right now, I wouldn't know. You would not know? No. Um, and beyond Sanja. the you described. No, it's even funny because really you haven't seen Colin Albert on the news. I mean, you were involved in this case and you don't even know what he looks like. Come on. I don't know if I believe you, Mr. Higgins, but OK. OK, so now, finally, the time that we've all been waiting for the text messages that were very surprising to me. But let's listen to them. Um. Did you try those spurn off screwdrivers? I stopped at the hilly for one last for one last night. I said, ha ha, how did you get my digits? Um, defendant responded, the Melissa and Lido show. I said, ha ha. I thought ha -ha. you creeped John's phone. I said, ha ha again. Ha ha. Um, how old is defendant he? responded, no way. I was the last person in Greater Canton who didn't have your number. I think even Kerry has it. I responded, what, with a bunch of question marks? I said, I just don't give my personal number out to anyone. How would Kerry have my number with a bunch of question mark? And the defendant responded, Melissa had it. As far as in those communications, uh, the Let me get a little faster. Do, <laughs> At least 1.25. The two individuals that I also know from the hillside. And uh, the Kerry Look at her. She's like, I'm watching you, bro. I believe that's... Carrie Curran, Chris uh, Curran's wife. Karen, <clears throat> what you doing, girl? Now, if I could direct your attention to page nine. And it's going to like that page nine. Come on, Lolly, hurry up. And again, sir, if you could uh, read from page nine as far as that conversation goes, it just indicates uh, whom is speaking at, at different points. Okay, so uh, the defendant said, I prefer a weed whacker. I responded, that's the thing about nicknames. Um, defendant said, we were tossing around the idea of a short vacay with the current show, wanted to see if you were game. I, I responded, you don't have a say. And I believe I was referring to nicknames. And I said, vacation where? Defendant responded, I know. Uh, they need to happen organically. I'm the queen of nicknames. Was just going to rent a beach house in... I believe it was supposed to say Fort Lauderdale. It's abbreviated. Something quick and easy. I said, hmm. Defendant responded, I'm the queen of AKs too. Always a good time. I responded, I'm going to Nashville next month, 19 to 21st for a benefit. One of our guys got shot in the head. You guys should come. Whoa. As far as either one of those. Why would we want to go to home, this? Discussion this doesn't sound good at all. Well, I, I mean, I definitely went to Nashville for that benefit for, for, for one of my coworkers. Um, it may have been more a conversation about the Florida trip, but I can't specifically recall it. Now, sir, if I could direct your attention to page 16, Mr. Gilman, if I could have that. And this is on that same date of January 13th, is that correct? I believe so. The date's not at the top here, but I believe it is. 
And again, sir, if you could read uh, from that page of communication as far as uh, who was speaking and, and what was said. So there's a photograph of somebody with a weed whacker. Um, the defendant said, no, you're not a creep. Wait, 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 wait. But what is she saying? No, you're not a creep too. Like there's some context missing here because nobody says, no, you're not a creep unless he said something like, I, I don't mean to like creep you out or something. What did he say? Where's the rest of it? I said, nope. She said, you're kind of a loner, which I used to be. I responded, Thanks. no, not really. I have a ton of buddies, but I only let a handful of friends in that I'm tight with. So you think you got me figured out? And then I typed circle of trust in uh, quotes. So he's talking about the circle of trust uh, in this text with her. And, you know, these texts were pretty, pretty, pretty impactful, in my opinion, because so far, you know, we have started this trial with the defendant in the middle, innocent until proven guilty. And we still have the defense case to go. There's a lot to go on. But the prosecution is charging her with a DUI with intentional homicide. Like she premeditated and she intended to kill the victim here. Uh, then they need to show the cause of death. They need to show that she's guilty. That They need to show that she's guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. So all that happened on Friday was that it moved the needle a little bit to the, hey, Maybe there was a motive because she's talking to somebody else. That's all that it did. But it was pretty damning, in my opinion. When I was watching this, honestly, and listening to the text messages, I was like, whoa, I had no idea. Lady, chill out. Page number 17. Coming back that and again, sir, if you could uh, read from page 17 as far as uh, what is said and who was talking. So the defendant said, yeah, I said loner, not loser. I assume you know a lot of people, PPL, people abbreviated. You never really can figure anyone out completely. Your dad died when you were young. And I responded, he died in March of 2020. Um, I'm still not a loser. You won't figure me His out. His voice LOL. cracks again. Defendant responded, no one, is, no one is a loser. I just didn't mean loner to imply friendly, fr friendless. I'm sorry, that I'm sorry that that's recent. It wasn't COVID, was it? I responded, cancer. Defendant responded, I know you date girls who don't lock the house behind them and you are private and observant. I'm sorry, what kind? I responded, long brain, kidney, and pelvis. How do you know all these things, LOL? And, and you know, this is so distasteful in my opinion because you can see, I mean, uh, you can hear how his voice is cracking, talking about uh, losing his father. He lost his sister. But, of course, in the text message, you don't know how the person sounds or feels or anything it's just a text but i think it's distasteful that she's going after this guy and like reaching out initiating a text um and he's just like why did you get my number where did you get my number he's opening up about you know losing someone in his family and she just continues like with the informal uh conversation like he's talking about his dad dying and she's like oh so you date girls don't lock the door like she wants to get into that dating subject um doesn't sit well with me i i don't like that so i don't know how the jury is gonna feel about that we shall see I'd like to turn your attention to the next page <laughs> and again sir if you could read from that uh in the blue bubbles is, is me i said you're funny Defendant responded, yikes, wow, that's rough. Jesus, I'm sorry. We chat a lot at the hillside. I responded, don't be sorry. Life is hard sometimes. I always figure it out. Hard. Life is hard. I said, who chats? Question mark. Defendant responded, hard. life is hard, but losing people is the hardest. So it I'm is? sorry. So I'm sorry. We chat. I responded, that's all you got? We chat? Sure. You're from Brockton. Spit it out. Defendant responded, you and I chatted about the girl who kept forgetting to lock the door. I said, oh, she has been out of play no, like, for three months said now. Oh, like I remember, right? Not oh, oh. He's going to say that a couple of times, but I think you mean like, oh, right, that girl. Well, she's been at a play. She's at a play for like three months now. All right, and Mr. Then player. And then I believe it's not to say out of rotation, question mark. And then, sir, if I could direct That's your attention so, to page uh, 20. How old are you? And again, sir, if you could, sorry. I'm a child at heart, but it's just the whole, you I'm know, gonna... out of rotation. Karen's like 42 years old and she's talking to this guy like she's, I don't know, 19? Blue bubbles again. I said, I just got a Saturday invite. 
I guess that's how said, people did you say do yes, it. Question mark. I, I, I said not know. yet with a bunch of periods, but did respond. The defendant said, what did you say, Mr. Elusive? I responded, no, I just don't want to intrude on your couple's night. Ha ha, I'm shy. The defendant responded, we prefer to hang out with non-couples. Bob Gallery is probably coming too, solo. We'll probably do cards or something at some point. I'm inviting you. And I uh -huh. said, ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Now, sir, is that the Saturday night that's being referenced there? Is that the same night that you had gone over uh, to the home at some point for the Patriots? And it's yeah. also missing context yeah. because on the top it says, what did you say, Mr. Elusive? What is that? Like, did, did, did he say, yes. oh, John yeah, invited me or something? The defendant said, John said Brian's being wishy-washy now, in quotes. I responded, ha-ha, did you tell him you texted me? The defendant right. responded, no. And then I gave a thumbs up. Right, right, right. Did, did, right. Did you tell your boyfriend that you were texting me? His friend? No. He's like, nice. Thumbs up. So now we get into the, we get in, right? He's feeling the situation. And she's like, no. Then I said, you cranky now, question mark? Defendant said, ha no, just stop being so anti-couples. Most couples don't even like each other. I said, name a few. Defendant said, name a few? I don't know. All of them, question mark. They, they all want to hang out with single people. I don't know and about that. I, said, hmm. I don't know about that. I have a, I have a couple that is, a, uh, they're great friends. They're really nice people. And I'm single. And sometimes we hang out, but... I don't feel comfortable hanging out all the time. And I'm not sure they feel comfortable either because it's weird. It's like, hey, uh, they're like, can we set you up with somebody? And I'm like, no, thanks. Like, they just want to set me up. Anyways. Thank you. Sir, if I could direct your attention to page 26. Anti-couple. That's not a thing, is it? Is it a thing? And sir, if I could ask you to read from that page. In blue is going to be myself again. Foul ball. Wait, wait, wait. You stink? She says, you stink. He says, you suck. And you're double trouble. She says, you're hot. Uh, and it responded, you stink. I said, why does, you suck why and does you're he double stink? trouble. Yeah, she's trouble. The defendant responded, you're hot. Yeah, she's trouble. I responded, are you serious or messing with me? The oh my gosh, she's trouble. She's trouble. Whoa. He's like... Oh my God, are you messing with me? Like, is this for real? You're pretty. Oh, you're pretty. That's not fair. I don't think that's cool if you're playing games with some guys like that. It's not cool, Karen. I responded, no, I'm serious. I responded, failing is mutual. Is that bad? How long have you thought that? Defendant responded, are you okay <sighs> driving? You don't want to stay here. I responded back. I'm how, long did, how long have you liked me? Like... Do you like me or do you want to go to prom? Yes or no? Check the box. Yes or no? How long have you liked me? Sir, she is dating your friend. Like, don't, don't, don't give her any ammunition. She obviously is not doing the right thing. And you said, is that bad? Because you know it is bad, right? So just be like, listen, I think you're a very beautiful woman. I would love in another world to be able to date you, but right now you're dating my friend, so I'm going to block your number, and please stop it. I'm fine. I have an office at the PD. You didn't answer the question. And then it starts to say, the defendant said, rather you stay here. And is that, uh, to your memory, when, when is that text exchange taking place? In reference to the night that you went over to the open side. I believe it was that night. Now, at you're hot. I'd rather you stay here with my boyfriend and I. Um, what the call, heck is going on? How you came into the house? I the attorneys are like, okay, here we door. go. This is the bad thing. And uh, if you know about how long were you at Mr. Oakley's house that night? I was probably one of the last people to leave, I think. And what if anything happened as you were exiting from Mr. Oakley's house that night? So as I was exiting... Um, what if anything sort house, of? It was either through the breezeway or the garage. And as we were walking out, the defendant planted a kiss on me. Now, before you went out that way, um, where was Mr. O'Keefe? Did you say goodbye to him or anything like that? I think I said goodbye to him. Uh, he might have been in the bathroom. I'm not 100% positive where he was. And when you went to leave, uh, which exit from the house were you headed to initially? Well, as I, as I said, I don't remember exactly if it was the breezeway or the or the garage I was, I was starting to walk through. But whichever way I started to exit, the defendant told me to go a different way. And where, which way did the defendant tell you to go? Well, her way. 
I don't, and I, and I don't, and I don't, I honestly can't tell you which door that was. If it, it was, it was either the, the breezeway or the garage. So here, just a quick pause. Uh, I'm going to make a comment on his body language because he just seems very comfortable. He's very comfortable. He's, you know, he's going like this, you know, just sitting very comfortable, just telling us, listen, I was, I was there. She's like, no, come over here. She, she kissed me. She planted a kiss on me and I blushed. So, you know, just interesting because it seems like he does want to get that, that story out. It does look better for him than for her in this case. So he does look very comfortable telling the story. And as you were going out, um, again, I'm sorry, what happened? The defendant kissed me. And how did she kiss you? Not like a friend. Um, lip to lip, Aww. is that fair to say? Yes. I feel um, like he was falling for her. That's the way I interpreted it. And were you still inside like the house? Like a boyfriend? Or were you outside the house if you know? Um... Not sure if we had just got to the outside or not. It might have. So not fair to play I'm not sure if I'm, like It this. was close proximity to, to leaving. And what was your reaction to that? I was taken back. Is that I wanted you more. Expecting? No. Um, and about how long was it between when that when the defendant kissed you and, and when you left? Well, almost immediately. Now, sir, if I could turn your attention back to the uh, exhibit before you on page number twenty-seven. Oh, don't be sad. It, it's ha you know it's okay. It happens. Yes. It's yeah, not so easy to find uh, someone. He's like, um, so I'm in the blue bubbles, so and sad. I said, I wish, I think you're messing with me. Yes, the defendant she is. said, why do you think that? Because. I responded, because this is so out of left field. Where did these feelings come from? There are no feelings. The defendant responded, honey. I just think you're like me. I said, meaning, question mark. The defendant said, do you have your own kids? I said, I have no kids. How am I like you, question mark, um, hello? And the defendant responded, aren't we alike? I said, I responded, She's I think so. She's so aloof and vague, and you know what I mean? And he's like trying to play her game and trying she's such a player player and he's trying to play her game with her and like he just wants an answer so why did like, you get my number nah, and reach out to me I and i like, think the defendant what do you mean? put a question mark on that bubble i believe see he wants or to I know. Might, know he's being serious now, he's like we want to know as, what's um, happening here you asking her about um why she reached out to you how often was that question asked by you through the course of these texts communication well every day the, the extent of the actual communication via text between the defendant and i was between January 12th and January 29th when John passed. On the 28th and 29th, the 28th, I sent a text as we spoke about before when we were at the waterfall. That text didn't respond. There was a text sent by the defendant to me the next day. So in that time period between the 12th and the 29th, there was nine days that the defendant and I exchanged text messages. With that being said, those text messages, I don't believe were every day, consecutive days. There was nine days in between the 12th oh, and the 29th. Oh, you know. You know, because you were and there so every day. You were checking your phone. You're like, did she text me back? Did she text me back? So what happened? Am I her, am I her boyfriend now? Like, did she text me back? And also the way that he makes it sound is like, oh, we were texting from this day to the 29th when Mr. O'Keefe died. But actually there was a period of uh, maybe a week or so that she stopped texting him back. And the only thing that happened was that he texted her the night of the waterfall bar, the night that everybody was together, the night before Mr. O'Keefe died. He texted her like, so like, are we going to, you know, what's up? And then she didn't respond. The next day, what she responded was John died. And that's kind of how it happened. The way that he's saying here, it's kind of like, oh, we were texting from this day to this day uh, continuously, but may maybe not every day. But he knows. He knows. He was checking his phone. As far as... <coughs> As far as that questioning, as far as um, posing to her, why did she reach out to you? Was that something that you asked once or more than once? Yeah, I asked it more than once. And, and, and during the pendency of this communication, I was basically trying to suss out what the intentions were of the defendant. Was the defendant interested in me? Was she at the end of her relationship with John? Was she trying to weaponize me against John and put me in the middle? Yes, he's a special agent. He's a special agent. So he's very like, he's very like, uh, what are your intentions? Are you trying to weaponize me? Or it's just like, I'm just being a player. I'm just playing a game with you. And he's like, I don't understand this. Like, let's get this straight. There was numerous things that were going on. And I, that's what I was trying to vet out, to suss out, or whatever vet you want to call it. He's but trying I was, to vet I was having a hard time accepting what was happening. And sir, if I could direct you to the She's next page, playing a game. She wants to have attention. She wants to have options because she had a fight with Mr. O'Keefe. In so I'm in the blue bubbles. She's like, all uh, right, he's a special shoot straight agent. with me. Let um, me keep my... The defendant responded, my I told you. I just think we're alike, options right? Open. Couple, couple question marks. We're alike. I responded, what does yes, that mean? agree. Now what? How? The defendant responded, I don't know. I said, mm. um, shouldn't you know? The defendant mm. responded, do you like me? I said, yes, from jump. 
Defendant said, when was jump? I said, first time I saw you. Defendant responded, when was that? I said, hmm? Hillside, for your sure. If I could direct your attention to the next Now case, all I'm the hormones are happy right, and jumping. So again, I'm in the blue bubbles. Hillside for sure. When were you interested? Defendant responded, I don't know. You're just my type. I responded, you think you can handle me? I thought you were happy, question mark. Defendant responded, how do you know if I'm happy? I said, I just assumed. Defendant responded, are you hard to handle? I may have put a question mark. Then I said, what do you like about me? No, I think she said, are you able to handle? It says, are you are to handle? But I think she meant, are you able to handle her, right? Uh, also, the how do you know if I'm happy? That's why they're able to introduce these text messages into the trial because they want to show that if she's unhappy, if she had a fight with her boyfriend, and if she's going after somebody, maybe she has a motive to murder him. Defendant responded, I just feel like you're from my neighborhood. I said, yes, yeah, yeah, ditto. Defendant responded, and I think you're hot. What is this a slang the kids are using? I think you're from my neighborhood. Is this something that the, the, the young people are talking about right now? Because I've ne I never heard that unless the, she's literally saying he's from her neighborhood. Or is she just saying like, you're from, you're like my type? What does that mean? Do you guys know? Please may, write a comment below and tell me what, what that means. Because I, I don't understand what's happening. I don't know. And if I could direct your attention to the next page, page 30. If I could ask you to read from that, sir. I'm in the blue bubbles again. You really think that? I have always thought that about you. Defendant responded, what? I responded that you're hot, smart, witty, but I didn't think Ma, you were interested. You're Defendant smart. responded, Let witty. Me my car. I responded, yeah, meaning quick with a response. Tell me why you got my number and reached out to me. Defendant responded, Tell me just right thought now. we were the same slash from the same neighborhood. Again. I responded, are you afraid to say what's on your mind? I, uh, what, what's in your mind? And then I said, on. Defendant responded, no, didn't I? No, didn't I? Question mark. She's playing games. So attention, attention, excuse me, to the next page. Aaron be playing games now. with Mr. Higgins. I'm glad I, I'm in the blue bubble again. I'm glad I stopped by. I should have come earlier. Do you really live in Mansfield? Defendant responded, yeah. I basically, yeah, I was basically begging you. I responded, you don't have to bed me. I meant to say bed beg. me. Ooh. Defendant responded, huh? Let's I not said, bed anybody yet, guys. Let's not bed anybody. I will give you what you want. What you How really, are you really texting want. right now? And I said, uh, uh, leaving me hanging. Defendant responded, no. I typed kids and then kind of. I mean, he really has a lot of typos. How am I texting? And I began hand? to say, is everyone asleep? Oh, oh. As the, um, no good, Mr. Higgins. Yeah, I was basically begging you. What did you take that to me? That you wanted me to come over? Uh, and what? Like she wanted you to come over with Mr. Keith sleeping? Is that is that what you guys are saying? Is that what, I'm, turn your attention is that what I'm understanding here? To this is this is so wild. So off with the defendant saying, "I just just wide awake on my phone." Yes, they are. Yeah. I said I should have stayed. LOL. So now what? Question mark. Defendant said, "Yes, you should have." I responded, "That would have been distracting." So now what? So no, what? And then I said, "Now." Defendant said, "Now what? What?" Question mark. I responded, oh, "Balls in your court." Defendant said, oh. "What do you want?" I said, "I, I responded, loaded you. question. What do you want?" Question mark. Defendant responded, I asked oh you, exclamation goodness. point. I, in turn, said, nope, you initiated this. If I could turn your attention to the next page. Please. I can't do it. I can't I do it. Not, sir. What you I want? Said, what do you want? Out. I'm in the blue bubbles. What? Defendant said, hey, we're single and we don't have kids. We can do whatever we want. I responded, don't you have a boyfriend? Question mark. Okay. We're single, Karen? We're single, Karen? I think you're like, I thought you were like living with Mr. O'Keefe and his children. We're single. We can do whatever we want. No, you were in a relationship, in a committed relationship with Mr. O'Keefe. Have some respect. We're not single. I'm single, but we're not single. Okay. And then he knows that she's not single. So when he says, don't you have a boyfriend? You know what I mean? Don't you have a boyfriend? What does she say? Where are you? Defendant responded. And then you'd be like, listen, lady, I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys something. I, I don't have time for this. If I see, because, you know, th the age comes, the, the, there's a time in your life that you know it's a game. 
And if somebody starts with that little thing, oh, da, 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 and these types of text messages, I'm like, okay, you're playing a game. I don't have time for this. So have a nice life blocked because that's not how you do it. You know, be honest. What do you want? Do you want to be in a relationship? Be honest with the other person. This, this playing games thing is just, uh, it's just like exhausting. Where are you? Question mark. I said, Canton. Defendant like, said, don't you have a boyfriend? Where are you? Answer me. Or I'm going to block you and stop these little jokes, these little games. We are question mark. I responded, my office is at the PD. Why? Why are you going to Mansfield? Question mark. Defendant responded, where is that? I said, Canton PD. Defendant said, I have a house there from before I reconnected W. John. I responded, oh, I feel like you're not really saying what's on your mind. If I can turn your attention to the next page, 34. And ask well, that's, all his, uh, on, uh, uh, that's what's on Defendant her mind. Defendant starts off and says, do you like me? Question mark. I responded, oh, yes, clearly. Defendant said, come over my house. Cringe. I responded, when? Question mark. Defendant said, when works for you? I said, whoever, and then whenever. Whoever, whenever, when whatever. You, question mark. Whatever, said, we'll be together. I'll just go right now, whenever, I whatever. I asked you first. Whoever. I responded, I think you're messing with me. Defendant said, I'm glad you came over tonight with some type of face. I responded, what do you mean some type of face? Me too. Ball's in your court. What do you want, Karen? You look great tonight. <laughs> I can direct your attention to the next page. <gasps> the poor guy, he just, <laughs> he just wants a shot with Karen. He's like, what do you want, Karen? You look great tonight, by the way. <laughs> 35 and the last or second to last blue bubble down the bottom. Sorry, but are you glad? Do you see that? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Page 35? Yes. And, and where is it again? Uh, second to last blue bubble, uh, starting with, are you glad? Yes. I, I said, I'm in the blue bubble. I said, are you glad you walked me out? Question mark. And what did she respond? Defendant said, um, yes, with like. Wait, but column, let's you know. read the top. Let's read the top. He says, I think you're hot. Always have thought that. Just have not revealed my thoughts. Right. Because she is uh, in a committed relationship. Then he says, no, I'm sorry. She says, I'm hot for the hillside. Low comps. Which, you know, she's saying everybody here is ugly and based on where I'm at, I'm a 10 or I'm a 9 or whatever she thinks she is. And then he says, knock it off, you're hot, period. Like, you're hot wherever you go. Are you glad you walked me off? She's like, mm, yes, smiley face. Are you? Definitely. And I think that means because when she walked him out, she gave him a... Some type of a mark there. Um, are you? Kiss. Question mark. And I said, DEF for definitely. And if I could direct your attention to the next page, 36. And if you could please read from that. So at the top, I'm in the blue bubbles. It says yes. She's crazy, man. She's and like, then I said, are you going home tonight or tomorrow right? a.m.? Like, defendant dude. texted, we kissed, comma, right? Question mark. He's so, so confused. So then I put a question mark on her question and said, is this a trick question? He's defendant so confused. Said, I don't know the when whole, I'm going home. I'm selling my house Brian Higgins with what I think is a smiley is face. Confusion right now. What a, what a trick question and a couple of question marks. I responded, She's are you moving to Canton? Player. I'm following your lead with this. Defendant responded, I live here, but I have property in Enfield. I'm guessing it's Medfield. Defendant said, why my lead? I don't want any responsibility. Mm. I responded, you started this, right? Question mark. Why did you get my number? And, and it says, each out to me. It meant to say, reach out to me. I then said, still have not told me. But you, you continue, to you continue giving and her and attention, right? You continue following Defendant said, sorry, game. should I not have? I responded, I'm fine with it. Just don't know why you can't answer. Exactly. Defendant said, you're mad at me? I said, OMG, no, not at all. You're being silly. Defendant said, I told you, exclamation point. I just think you're like me, and I'm attracted to you. And then she said, a lot. I responded, feeling is mutual. I just never saw this coming. Defendant said, why? Question mark. I responded, because I just assumed you were happy with your situation. Defendant responded, I was, but things have deteriorated. And if I could direct your attention to the next okay. page, 38. So in this case, it's not, you know, it is bad because it's still a, a friend or an acquaintance of her boyfriend. But if she was like on a break, you know, like the episode of Friends, we were on a break. Maybe she thinks it's fine. You know, she was not with John and they had a fight or whatever. Uh, but still, not the friend, not the friend. I have to read from that, sir. I said, why? Question mark. How so? Question mark. What did Melissa say when you asked for my number? Question mark. The defendant responded, it is very, very complicated. He and I dated when we were kids and then his sister died and everything got fucked up. I responded, he seems very into you. The defendant responded, I just told Melissa that I had your number but lost it. I said, that's cute. She wasn't suspicious, question mark. The defendant responded, no, she's great. 
I responded, does she know you like me? Question mark. The defendant responded, she's a sweetie. We just agreed. You are great with another smiley type face. And sir, if I could direct your attention to page 40, I'm ask you to read from that. The Hold on. Defendant said, yeah, but where is Hold that? On, real quick, pause. Whisper sleeping next to me. And I just want you guys to see. He has a bed that is a lamb. And he's almost eating the bed. And where is he? Where is he? Hi, Whisper. Hi. Say hello, my friends. Take this light out of my, out of my face, Mom. Mwah. Okay, go back, go back, go back. I love you. Okay, sorry, guys. I just wanted you to see Whisper. Let's go back to the text messages. I have had all my shit here for a couple of years in my house has been vacant, but I'd like to get closer to the water. I responded, hmm, are you breaking up or staying together? She say like, can you give me a house by the water, please? Like, I'm just like feeling what your situation the is. The responded, I don't know. He hooked up with another girl on vacation. I'm very close to his niece. It is a friend. It is a very fucked up situation. I responded, when was that? And how did you find out he hooked up? Question mark. I don't want to complicate your situation. The defendant responded, we went out. We went away for New Year's, the four of us. I put the Aruba. kids to bed and found him in the lobby of our hotel all over one of our friend. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I responded, it does matter. Now, as far as that... does matter indicates. for you, Brian, because if she's mad at him, right, then you can get a chance there. But okay, so here Karen's saying uh, she put the kids to bed, I believe, I believe her, and found him in the lobby of our hotel all over one of our friends. Okay, so... The girl that came to testify that she was in Aruba and, you know, John was uh, not, he didn't kiss her, whatever. He was like hugging her. I don't know. I don't know exactly what he did, but she did say that he was very drunk, like, like falling, that she was like, no, go this way. So even though she testified that nothing happened, her sister testified that nothing happened. We don't know because when people are drunk, you know, a lot can happen. And you don't know if he had a crush on her, if she had a crush on him. He's seeing her at the lobby. So we don't know what Karen saw, if she has any, um, if there's any facts behind what she thinks. But yeah, you know, she's getting mad. She's like, listen, I'm in this relationship. I'm taking care of the kids and he's just being silly. Uh, so that part is actually uh, okay. At any point in time where that occurred. So there was an occasion that the defendant stopped at my house. And again, the conversation that took place at my house was in relation to, again, sussing out and trying to figure out if this was what, everything that I stated before. Like, was this legitimate? Was she seriously interested in me? Look was at she at the face. end of her relationship no, with John? With um, you, bro. And during that, there was touch on that topic. And I became to realize, it was my understanding at that point that this incident took place in Aruba on New Year's Eve based off the text messages and the conversation at my residence. Was my residence. He's so proper. He's such a special agent. Yes, I, I mean, outside of being over there for the game, there was only one time that I, well, he's still the defendant and I ever interacted on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If I could direct your attention to the next page, 41, and ask you to read from that. So I'm in the blue bubbles, and I said, did they bang? Question mark. <laughs> did they the bang? The responded, does that matter? Question mark. I said, sorry, I was just asking. I was just trying to figure shit out. <gasps> the defendant re responded, it doesn't really matter. I said, okay, I won't ask again. The defendant said, I don't care with a smiley face. It, it doesn't matter. I said, I responded back, okay, hear you loud and clear, Karen. The defendant responded, uh, okay. I responded, why are you getting your thing all twisted up over simple questions? And then I typed on. The defendant responded, <laughs> I'm not. I am, question mark. The, I responded, you're kind of getting defensive. The defendant responded, defensive not at all, with, a, with an exclamation point. <sighs> so if I could direct your attention to page uh, 46. He's also not very, like, you know, clear on this whole text messaging thing. He's like, why are you getting all twisted on your thong and on your thing? Like, she's not getting twisted. She's just telling him what happened. Defendant is in gray. She said, we did kiss earlier, comma, no, with an exclamation Where point. Where are those texts? I responded in blue it. bubble. I think you initiated that. No, question mark. Defendant said, yep. Do I owe you an apology? Question mark. I said, OMG, no. Why are you being sensitive? Defendant responded, she's I'm not. Playing. I responded, kinda. Is a P and a FFT never responded by the defendant? What do you want from me? Question mark. I responded, what's on the table? Question mark. Defendant said, what do you want? Ideally, question mark. I responded, the real deal. Defendant responded, it doesn't exist. Mm. Oh, Karen, playing with his dreams and his hopes and his fantasies. And look at 
well, I don't like to comment on the family, but Mr. O'Keefe is like, seven, sir. I can't believe this is going on. I That's never saw these taxes before. What is happening? He's almost at the defense table. Like it he's like laying blue. his I said, head I can there. go to any base, but usually hands come in Bedford or down to the Cape. Defendant responded, which base down the Cape? Which what? branch? I said, Ami's Ami. Defendant Ami, said, I'm not Ami. abnormally sensitive. I responded, Joint Base Cape Cod. Oh, I won't be so hot on you. Defendant responded, mm. OMG, you're not. You called me trouble. That makes me sound bad. I responded, I was just playing with you. Oh, Defendant she knows responded, exactly you weren't, but that's what okay. That means. I responded, stop being sensitive, please. Defendant responded, I'm not. She's not being sensitive. She's like playing with you. That's what her text message are. Oh my God, you call me trouble. Oh my God, you call me trouble. That doesn't mean she's sensitive. She is not literal like you are. She's just like saying, you know, she's she's flirting with you. <clears throat> I'm sorry, reference. In that, that page of text communications, you made reference to a, a base down the Cape. Is that right? Yes. And where is that in relation to uh, where you live in Barcelona County? So I can utilize one of the gates uh, to get onto the base. I can get fuel. I can shop. I then can hit the Bowen Bridge, and I would use that as a cut through at the time when I was splitting my time between two different properties. Is there also like a duty-free shop there? There is, yes. And uh, at some point throughout the course of the text communications, did you offer to pick something up for the, defend for the defendant from that shop? I believe so. The judge really so pays attention, attention to, to page, the whole uh, testimony. <clears throat> Like she's always looking at the witness, always looking at the attorney. Like she's on top yeah, of it. That, Defendant said, "I don't know." Question mark. It's an, it's an, it's an old colonial. It has a lot of bedrooms, with kind of an emoji. I responded, "More than, more than you clearly need." Are you moving to Canton? Question mark. Defendant said, "I know seriously. Some rooms I only go into dust. Not anytime soon. I'm there most of the time, but sometimes it's a lot." I responded a lot. Why? Question mark. Defendant responded. I, I then said, do you even know what you want? Question mark. Or who? Question mark. Defendant responded because I went from being solo to trying to give attention to kids who aren't mine. And I never wanted kids. I responded. I thought you were happy in this. I thought you were in this happy relationship. Defendant responded. Everyone is happy at the hillside. If I could direct your attention to the next page 61 and ask you to read from that. Yikes. So it starts off with the defendant. It said, uh, everyone is happy at the hillside exclamation point. I responded, oh, God, you avoid things. Defendant responded, it's just very, very complicated dynamic with the four of us. He isn't cut out for what he's doing. And the kids present constant issues. I responded, I think he believes he is doing the right thing. Defendant responded, well, of course he is, but his heart isn't in it. It's only because he's very, very close to his sister. How do you know that, uh, Karen? How long have you dated him? And how long have he Wait, maybe she did date him the whole time? But seriously, you don't know what people's hearts have inside. And you don't know, you shouldn't say things like that. That's my opinion. Uh, I responded back, I know how you feel, kind of. I was his married, heart is and not when in I met it. her, she had a two and a half year old. Right. I went from being single to being a dad. It's hard. Then it's I said, hard. I'm divorced since 2017 and have no kids. Okay, so that sounds like a Tinder profile. Divorced, no kids. Hello. I could ask you to turn to the next page 62 and ask you to read from that, sir. It continues. I said, I'm divorced since 2017 and I have no kids. <gasps> Defendant continues. responded, I try very hard, but they are very spoiled and they're not my family. My parents oh, keep telling God. me I'd feel differently if they were mine or my own sisters. Then I told you he got drunk and sloppy on NYE while we were away and that has really affected me. I responded, what did he exactly do? Question mark. Defendant responded, I never got... Married. What did he do? Now, somehow, I never got married. W someone about raising quit kids with an emoji. I responded, why don't you tell me? Question mark. Defendant responded, he was a puddle all day and then disappeared. Then I found him all over our friend's sister in the lobby of our hotel. And she's gross, which I think may actually be worse. Not sure. I responded, oh God, did they bang? Did they bang? That's his favorite question. Did they bang? Did they bang? The girl, by the way, that came to testify, she's very pretty and not gross at all unless she's, you know, she's very pretty. Very nice girl. Now, she doesn't like Karen at all, and I can see why. And did they bang? I'm going to ask you to turn to the next page, sir, page 63, if you can read from that. But that part uh, is actually blue. consistent said, with what the girl, sorry for interrupting all the time. That's actually consistent with what she testified because she said, oh, John just wanted to like hang out by the pool all day because he was excited to watch the game, like something like that. Like he was just hanging out at one point. So that's what Karen's saying. Like he was in a puddle all day and then he started drinking. And then, you know, later I saw him at the lobby with her and hey, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Bang, question mark. Defendant said, so I was the kids, so I was the kids celebrating New Year's W 
I think it's without him, which shouldn't be my role. No, True. I doubt it. He was a mess. Not by himself. I said, hmm, was it the first time with her, or do you think there were others? The defendant responded, I don't really think there were others. I'm with him all the time. He never Can seems to want to go faster? anywhere. W-O, without, so without me. But honestly, the issues the with the kids bother me more than him actually cheating. They, they are constant, and it feels like a lose-lose. I responded, hmm, you clearly have a lot of feelings swirling inside you. The defendant responded, yeah, it's very complicated. Sorry for the rant. I responded, or well, began to respond, you can vent, babe. Mm. Babe? 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 You can vent, babe. This drives me crazy, man. It's kind of like a love bombing thing from a narcissist that you barely know and you start talking and all of a sudden it's like, hi, love. Hi, babe. I'm like, dude, no. Like, no. Uh, he's he's definitely very hopeful here. If I turn your attention to the next page. I'm here for you, babe. Said, you can cheat on your boyfriend with me, babe, because then later... Guess what? You can cheat on me with another guy. I just feel like I spread myself too thin and sometimes it's thankless. I responded, hmm? Defendant responded, <laughs> yeah, you probably do. felt that way too. I responded, I did at times. It was one, not two, thankfully. Defendant responded, want to grab a drink? Question mark. I responded, if you gave me some notice, I could, I could have. So maybe she's not Defendant dating responded, John you in capital this time. Said I don't you know. Were adaptable. I responded, I am, but I have my work truck with me and not my personal. Do you get angry when you don't get your way? Defendant probably. responded, that sounds like an excuse. I really get my way. I doubt that. As, uh, I really, I. Um, is that doubt. something that occurred on one time or more than one time? She sounds like somebody that gets her way. And at any point in time, other than the two you've already uh, recounted, as far as going over to Mr. House, for the football game or uh, the defendant stopping by your. Uh, Are we done with the text messages? No, still got more. By yourself. No, uh, never. Uh, and sir, if I could direct your attention to uh, page 74. Uh, you're that. He's super excited to go over these text messages. <laughs> Defendants said, Are you single? Question mark. I responded, Yes. Defendant said, I don't think it's out of left field. Wasn't I already begging you to come over last Saturday? Question mark, question mark. I responded, you getting my number from Melissa and reaching out to me? Question mark. Defendant said, and on vacay and probably a few other occasions. I responded, you didn't, it should say you didn't really beg. Defendant said, I asked at least twice. How do people usually reach out to each other? Question mark, question mark. I responded, why would I have thought you had any interest in exactly. me? Question mark. Um, usually do it, mm. usually do it when they do live with usually do do it when they do live with someone and then i said do not do it exactly the Senate responded maybe maybe not yeah you live with someone you don't start texting their friend and that's your reason that's her i said i could go on and on but i do not want to pump i should say your shit up too much the defendant responded thanks for saying that but low comps at the hillside i responded you know how to ruin something nice i frequent other places the defendant responded, John has showed me about five times the ring video of me walking you out on Saturday and my voice and my accent are killing me softly with an emoji of somebody throwing up. I responded, um, what? Defendant responded, yeah, he has cameras everywhere, you cops, with another emoji. I responded, Jesus. Defendant said, he's like Christ. Are you guys hooking up? Question mark, question mark. Wow. And I, started, I said, OMG, great. If I could turn your attention to the next So page, John right? asked her, like, are you I hooking up with this guy? I don't need guy. drama, dude. Defendant said, no, it's fine. I responded, seriously? Defendant said, I'm serious with an exclamation point. I said, you legit planted one on me. Defendant responded, I know where the cameras are anyway, duh. And then it was OMG Bruins with an emoji duh. after that. I responded, so your slick move isn't on there with some question marks? Defendant responded, of course not. I responded, oh my God. And then I said, I almost an emoji with somebody throwing up. Defendant responded, it was a peck anyway. I kissed Kerry and gay Jeff too. I responded, yeah, weak. I agree. Karen be kissing uh, everybody. As, uh, cameras at Mr. O'Keefe's house, is that something that you were aware was there prior to that conversation with the defendant? No, not that I recall. <sighs> the judge's like, let's go, yeah, let's go. Where are the texts? Defendant said, LOL, funny. I responded, so now he is jealous of me? Question mark. Defendant said, no, with an exclamation. I told you, he likes you a lot. I said, which makes this worse? Question mark. Defendant yes. said, you said or did something yes. at the bar last week. And he goes, I like Ryan more and more. I responded, I think he's a good dude too. Defendant responded, yeah, he is. I responded, funny. What's your end game? What, what do you want from me? What do you want from you me? You would just confuse the, it should say the shit out of yourself. Because I'm a lot of fun. Okay. <laughs> now, sorry, the he uh, that you're referring As to you. in communications, who was that just for John O'Keefe. I'd like to direct your attention to page 84. Uh, still going. We're still going. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're going to go to cross-examination soon. There is a lot to come. I said it was fun. Defendant said, I complimented you today, too, with a couple of exclamation points and then some type of emoji. I said, and kicked my nuts in. Defendant said, OMG, how? I responded, if I had more notice, I would have grabbed a drink somewhere, so I'm all set with that. And then I said, in quotations, that's fine, but I am not asking again. Uh, defendant said, well, it was 7 p.m. and I'm super cool. So right, so right now I'm asking again with some type of a, 
I think it's a smiley face. I responded, coming to your house would have been bad for the both of us. For starters, you wouldn't have wanted me to leave. The defendant responded, now equals not. That sounds good. I responded, that's trouble. Defendant said, why? Question mark. Yeah, but at least he, he's saying, you know, it would have been bad for both of us. A little bit of a level head here, even though he's like, he's like so eager to hook up with her. Obviously, obviously, he's very eager to hook up with her. Very interested in her romantically. Yes, but it would have been bad. And that's a smart position. You know, yeah, as an adult, you have to you have you can't think with your emotions all the time with your desires. The defendant said, no, I'm busting your chops. It's OK. I responded, no, you are, you are sensitive. Nice try. You don't think if I came over for a drink, we would have gotten carried away. The defendant said, yes. you in capital letters said you were adaptable and tons of fun. I took that as an invite for an invite. And I responded, oh, okay. The defendant responded, I'm 42. I know what happens when you invite someone over for a drink. I responded, you're the master of avoidance. So you think I would yes, just give it, is. I meant to say give it up. The defendant responded, I, I have been, I've been a lot. Yes, you would give it up to her. If that's, if you were in the blue, yes, you would give it up. I'm sure you would. And don't people say anymore, uh, like Netflix and chill? Like, the, don't, don't the kids say that nowadays? Uh, come over to watch a movie or something? She's like, I'm 42. I know what happens when you invite somebody. In my life, for a I time. have a little bit of cop DM mindset and then said, Ben Fru. And if I direct you to the next page, 91, sir. The defendant said, What am I avoiding? Question mark. I'm not afraid Everything. to be Everything. I responded, Everything. some of my questions. Defendant responded, okay, which? Ask again. I what said, no want? tricks with the kids. Defendant responded, I'm pretty sure we were hooked up. I responded, okay. <laughs> Defendant said, I can't say that, question mark. I said, of course you can. Defendant said, did I miss any other questions, sir? Question mark. Probably. Are you having a drink right now? Question mark. Defendant said, yeah, on my second. I said, show me what you got. And if I could direct your attention to page 99. <laughs> That's the reason that, sir. Defendant said, none of that is true, exclamation point. I'm not talking to other guys, and I have issues with John, and things are far from perfect. You just happen to know about him, BC, I guess, because we all hang out at the same bar. I'm sure you talk to other girls. That's what single people do. I'm not married, neither are you, neither is John. I responded, was that your attempt at a lecture or deductive reasoning, question mark? What do you want from me, question mark? Defendant said, that's just how I think slash feel. You don't need to approve. I've already answered that last question a couple times, I think. I responded, I'm not judging you, never have, never will. Defendant responded, Wait, 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 never have, never will? I'm pretty sure you're in her judgment today. You're sitting in at her trial for her judgment today. So never have, never will. See I don't how know quickly what your love life is about, nor is it my business. That's how quickly love fades. Sir, if I can now direct you to page 102. And that's it, right, that's Lolly? Please, let it be it. Defendant said, my only, I'm assuming point is that there's a difference between being married to someone and dating them, and we have no intention of ever getting married. The point of dating is not to get tied down. If you're not confident, you should be, in my mind anyway. The first two, but I don't care too much about the other girl. I responded, okay, so he is cool with you dating other people, question mark. Defendant responded, and I'm, I'm not say. I happy per se, just realistic that the there's cracks avoidance. and it's far from perfect. I doubt it. If he's seeing someone else, I wouldn't want to know either way. He probably feels the same way, and you probably feel that way about whoever you hook up with. I think that's normal. I responded, okay. Defendant said, you don't agree with me, question mark, question mark. If I could direct your attention to page 107. That's the reason that, sir. Baby. Little baby. Defendant said, at a bar, question mark. I responded, I wasn't suggesting bar? anytime soon. I know you're you with your friend. I meant my house. Probably after eight. Uh, defendant said, probably after eight. I said, I responded, okay, if you don't want Juana, that's fine. No pressure. Defendant responded, I will, a drink. I, it looks like I, I tapped the bubble with a question mark. I then said, what do you drink? Question mark. Are you out now? Question mark. Defendant responded, sorry, I'll drink whiskey if that's what you're having. I responded, ha, ha send me a pic of you too. Now, you had testified earlier about some occasion uh, prior to the 28th um, when the defendant had come over your house uh, in West Rochester, correct? Yes. In this case, that you just read I it. think that's the, the end of the text. <sighs> oh, no, there, there's more. There's still a little well, more. Pages. After that, that sort Make it two times speed. To get these, to, uh, to the end of the text message. I believe she was out with a friend that night and lost a female friend, yes. Okay. And that evening when she came over your house, uh, about how long was she there? Not long. And so what happens uh, when she arrives? Let's go, Lolly. This is the it was, best it was you got. Of it was, best it was, evidence it was a, you got so far. It wasn't an interrogation. Far. It was a face-to-face -face version of trying to suss out and vet, like, what is this all about? Again, I mean, you know, I'm not, not proud of these text messages. It, it is Should what it be. is. I take responsibility for them. But, Good. you know, John was a friend at the same time. And I certainly wasn't, really. if they were at the end of the relationship, they were at the end of the relationship. But I wasn't going to have somebody utilize me and weaponize me against somebody that I liked. Um, and it was just it was just a weird experience. It was, uh, I don't even yeah, think either one of us finished a drink. It was 
like I said, it was it was this type of like, what is this all about? And then she left. I just I didn't have to get in, so I just got home. You wanted it. You were down. Now, that evening or at any other points, um, at any other points in, in your friendship or your relationship, whatever, uh, how would you want to term it? Was there any other sort of uh, intimate contact beyond what you described uh, occurring as you walked about that night you were over Mr. Ortiz's house with the baby? Are you asking if she ever kissed me again? I'm asking if there was any kissing, uh, any sexual relationship, anything at all between yourself and the defendant? Absolutely not. In, 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 in not. Referring to my at my residence when she stopped by, it was just I was very uncomfortable and it was just an uncomfortable situation. I just a weird vibe. That's the best I can describe it. Aww. And lastly, sir, turning uh, lastly, as it applies to the defendant, so sad. It seems so and, uh, sad. A couple different dates uh, from the middle to the bottom of the page. Is that correct? There is. It's so right sad. That's the start. So... Uh, from, excuse me, where it says uh, Sunday, January twenty third, nine forty p.m. Defendant. So Sunday, January twenty third, twenty third, nine forty p.m. Defendant texted me, phone works, and then an emoji with arrows going like both ways. And I responded, thought you were all set, question mark. Defendant said, with talking, question mark, no. I said, hmm, are you sure? And uh, she didn't respond. And I believe I said, th that was it for that, for that, the 23rd, I'm sorry. So then the next uh, date that uh, any text communication was sent between the two of you would have been uh, Friday, 11.32 p.m., is that correct? That's correct. That would have been when we were at the waterfall. And again, what does the text say there? Um, well. That's when you heard that, correct? Yes. And then the next text communication is the following day, or Saturday, the 29th at 11.54 a.m., is that correct? Yes. And uh, who's speaking in that communication, and, and what is it? That is the defendant, and the defendant said, John died. And uh, did you respond to that at all? No. And did, do you have any other communication uh, with Ms. Reed following receiving that text message on January 29th? No, I have not. Thank you. I'm just going to continue. Which is also very odd. Everything is odd in this case. Everything is odd. So let's take a deep breath because we're, over, we're done with the text messages. Nice. That was a lot. That was a lot. That was a lot. And that was definitely a side of the defendant we had not seen before. So I do believe that the Commonwealth has a point for this uh, testimony with the text messages because whatever, Brian Higgins, you know, he's single. He He's not the one who initiated it, between the two and the situation they're in, they were in. She's the one that looks bad because she's the one that had a commitment she was in a relationship, she was living with someone, and she is initiating texting somebody he knows. I wouldn't consider them to be friends. Uh, I would just say acquaintance, you know. But anyway, so that's it for the text messages. Now, we're going to get to the juicy stuff. We're going to get to the real reactions, the real body language that's happening all over his face. I thought that would be not a lot, especially because I was watching, like, you know, just quickly watching the trial at first. But when I sat down to look at his face expressions, there is a lot going on. So now it's time for the cross-examination. Let's go to the cross. The tragedy that he was aware of. Horrible tragedy, yes. And based on that personal friendship and that personal relationship, he offered you the convenience of officing out of Canton PD. I would say that's a good summary. And in addition to just <clears throat> having an office there, you also had a key card access, correct? I did to get in and out. What was the name that you used? You said it was a proxy card? I think it's called, it, I think in the, in the IT world, it's probably called a proxy card. That's what I know it to be. So you had both a physical office and full access to Canton PD, all based on the friendship and relationship and convenience, uh, well, the friendship and relationship you had with Chief Berkowitz and the, the convenience that he wanted to give you for having that office there, correct? No, I wouldn't say full access. I had access to certain areas within the department. Well, you certainly had. Okay, okay, so let's get started. With this one, uh, we're gonna do it again, the video in slow motion. What he is uh, going to show here is, a lot when he says that the key card access was just to get in and out. Okay, so that's what we're gonna watch. Uh, Jackson's gonna ask him, you also had a key card access, right? Because that's going to trigger a lot of things for Mr. Higgins. Uh, as we all know, if we have watched Friday testimony, he's going to get to the end where you know the key card gives you access to where the evidence was, where the car was brought in. Now the video disappeared. Now you were there. The X, the key card says that. So it makes sense that his body is going to react to this. So when he says yes to get in and out, he's going to have a uh, clear throat, uh, which could mean uh, disagreement, anxiety. It could mean, it could also mean nothing, but Together, combined with the situation, combined with the subject, combined with his reaction, that's what we're looking at. Now, 
He's going to clear the throat. Then he's going to take a deep breath. And the right side of his mouth is going to go up. The right side of his mouth or pursing the, the lips, biting. Uh, it could mean disapproval, distrust, or simply stress. Now we also have the forehead is going to frown. And we have uh, forehead frown could be overthinking, worry. And then we also have the joint eyebrows, which could mean impatience and frustration. Right between the eyebrows. Uh, I don't even think you can see here because it's, you know, two little marks right between the eyebrows. And he's going to have then, oh, sorry. He's going to have this going on. Then he's going to have the frown going on. And that could mean frustration, focus. So he probably doesn't like this question. So it makes sense that his face would react this way. But then he does the tongue jut that we're used to and that we all know. Did I get away with it? Did I get away with it? So let's watch this video one more time. But now we're going to watch it in slow motion to see if we can catch it. It was born out of tragedy, a, a family tragedy that he was aware of. Horrible tragedy. Horrible tragedy. Yes. Okay. And based on that personal friendship and that personal relationship, he offered you the convenience of officing out of Canton PD. I would say that's a good summary. And in addition to just <clears throat> now is the key card office, clears throat. You also had a key card access, correct? I did to get in and out. What was the name that you used? You said it was a proxy card. I think it's called. I, it, I think in the in the IT world, it's probably called a proxy card. That's what I know it to be. So you had both a physical office and full access to Canton PD, all based on. I think we got it right. Let me go back one more time in real time and see then and out what was the right there in and out the name that you used you said it was a proxy card i think it's called i it, i think in the so nothing major nothing major right it could just be that he's nervous anxious and and just doesn't like that question because he knows they're going to grill him on that so let's go to the next on this next portion of the video we're going to see brian higgins say there are no secrets here. He's my friend. But then he does a tongue jut. He raises his eyebrows, which could be used to flirt, but I don't think he's flirting with Jackson, right? Or it could be expressing surprise, agreement, fear, disbelief, disapproval, or silent greeting. Greeting, greeting. You know, like when somebody goes like, or surprise. <gasps> I mean, I really don't, I can't, I can't do it. But anyways, here he's doing a tongue jut with the eyebrows raised. And I just thought it was interesting because I don't think it has anything to do. Oh yeah, by the way, Whisper's here now. He's here now. Hi, hi, hi. I don't think he's say, uh, doing the tongue jut, did I get away with it? Because he's saying he's my friend, because that's true. Brian Albert is his friend. I think he's doing that because he says, there are no secrets here. So let's watch the video. Well, I don't know the exact number, but yes, we socialized. Absolutely. That's all I was getting at. Okay, that's fine. I mean, there's, there's no there's no secrets here, right? He's my friend. Mr. Higgins, let me ask the question. Saw that? You guys saw that? Did you see it? Did you see it? I get it. That's fine. I get it. That's fine. Um, now this smile. It's going to be a contest Albert well enough to know what his relationship with, for instance. So that was it. You know, I don't know if you guys want to do it again in slow motion. Let me try and see if it works. So we socialized more when we started. I started working with his unit. Started. Okay. So my question is, 
Well, I, I don't know the exact number, but yes, we socialized, absolutely. That's all I was getting at. Okay, that's fine. I mean, there's, there's, no, there's no secrets here, right? He's right? my friend. Mr. Higgins. And Tung Jut. Let me ask the That's questions. it. I get it. That's fine. I get it. Um, and here we go. Now we have eight objections, eight times being sustained. Alan Jackson just cannot ask this question. And Lolly's like, sort of, sort of, what if anything? Objection, Your Honor. Sort of objection. And we're going to see some uh, reactions from Brian as well. So let's watch this video. You knew Eddie, or, or Officer Hernandez, before Jackson, you ever knew one. Ask the question. You knew Officer Hernandez before you ever knew Brian Alcorn. Yes. You knew him before you even knew Kevin Alcorn. Yes. And you're aware that there was a physical altercation Jackson, between Brian Albert and Eddie Hernandez that you're aware of, correct? The objection sustained. Are you aware that Brian Albert had gotten into a fist fight with Eddie Hernandez? Objection sustained. Were you at a Christmas party when that happened? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained as to that form. You can be specific. Huh? Have you ever been in an event with Brian Albert and Eddie Hernandez and seen them fight? Uh, Christmas. Christmas. I don't even know the question anymore. It's just Christmas. Five years or so before 2022. Christmas, okay, five years. Sustained. What is that? Is that a question? You do know that Brian Albert has a reputation for being a fighter. Objection. Sustained. You were asked in a formal interview. One more. Come do you on. recall? I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear about some of your prior statements. You had a formal interview with some folks prior to your testimony at a prior proceeding. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm tracking. Okay. At the formal interview, which is what I'm going to call that. Okay. The formal interview, you were asked about Brian Albert and his reputation. Were you not? Yes or no? Yes. You indicated in that formal interview that even Chief Berkowitz was quote, a little afraid of Brian Albert. All right. So that is... So watch, Mr. Higgins. I think that was actually nine objections. I don't know. I think that was like nine objections here. So, Mr. Higgins is going to, I think he, he's doing these faces like when Lolly is saying objections. But when he, when Alan Jackson asks him about the formal interview, his face does this, right? So, here's the first one. Alan Jackson says, at the formal interview, which is what I'm going to call that, which is kind of like a poke at... Brian Higgins, because apparently the formal interview is with the feds interviewing him. And who knows what's going to happen in that investigation, right? But they're not allowed to say it during this trial. So uh, Brian is like, yeah, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I know, what you t I know what you're talking about. Leave it alone. And then when he says, uh, that's what I'm going to call it, Brian was like, okay, okay. And then he makes this face. Uh, then when uh, Alan asks him about Brian Albert's reputation, Brian Higgins looks maybe at his attorney. I don't know. He's looking to the side. As usual, there's there's somebody there. It's probably his attorney uh, because we're going to see his attorney later. Then he looks down and to the side. And then um, when the, when Alan Jackson asks him, even the chief said he's a little afraid of Brian Albert. The eyes, this last uh, big one here, scream like at his attorney, right? Like, what the heck is going on? Like, where are you? Are you going to save me or not? Okay. At the formal interview, which is what I'm going to call that. Okay. The formal interview, mm -hmm. you were asked about Brian Albert and his reputation. Were you not? Yes or no? Yes. You indicated in that formal interview that even readjusting posture, Jackson. looking down, I'm avoiding eye contact, looking at right. the attorney. So that is the objection sustained. That's stricken. I'll see you at sidebar. Come on, Judge. Let's let's continue. When it's getting good, every time it's getting good, she has to be like, "Let me see you at sidebar." But anyways, Whisper doesn't want to go to bed. He wants to be here with the lights. But, you know, it is what it is. So I have to keep him here. Karen staring at Brian as he testifies. Kind of like, we're from the same neighborhood. I think you're hot. 
And now we're going to watch this interaction where they're talking about the drinks. They're talking about how many drinks did you have? How many drinks did Brian Albert have? And we're going to see a few reactions here from Brian Higgins. So first we're going to go over this slide and then we're going to watch the video. Uh, so when he, it's, it's just weird because he's asking like, did Brian have more drinks than you? Did you have more drinks than Brian? And then he says, to be honest, I wasn't keeping track. And then he looks at someone to his right, looks down and looks to the right. And when you're looking down to the right, typically it could be lying because this is where our creative side is. And we tend to look to the right when we're imagining things, right? We're not really reliving facts. Now, when they say Brian left the hillside and you stayed correct, then he said for a short time, yes. And then he touches his face, which he's going to do a lot. We're going to see a lot of this. Uh, here we see that when people are anxious or stressed, they may touch their face as a way to comfort themselves, you know, a pacifier or distract from their discomfort. They may be lying or hiding something. Touching the face also can be a sign of de deception. So the deception here would be that Brian left and he stayed for a short time. Yes. I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but we're definitely going to see Brian Higgins touch his face a lot. And I'm always going to point out where, like what the subject is. What is the question? What makes his subconscious mind touch his face as a form of pacifying. It's like he doesn't have anywhere to go. He can't get up. He can't just run, right? We want to like run in a situation like that under so much pressure. So one thing he can do is touch his face and it's a form of pacifying. So now let's watch this video, very entertaining video, and we'll come back. He wasn't there that long. Um, well, it doesn't take that long to drink a beer, does it? If you're sort of thirsty and in a hurry. What? Is that a question? Everything I say up here is a question. Okay. Just presume well, that. All right. So. Well, that wasn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> so let's. Brian's let's, like, can yes. I laugh? Yes. I'm yes. going to prison. What's happening? Uh, all right. Let me put a question mark at the end of that. Okay. Please, Your memory Alan. that Brian okay. Albert had more drinks than you did when you had those three to four um, Jameson and gingers. To be honest with you, I wasn't keeping track. Okay, let me slow this down right here to see if I can get anybody language. Let's see. Oh. Okay, looks to the side, looks at the attorney, swallows. He left. His eyes are looking for something. Stayed, correct? For a short Touches time. The face yes. For a short time. There you go. You later changed your mind All right. and ultimately. So we're gonna pause here and go to the next one. Okay, so this one he's going to make a face where he says, Well, that's what she said in the text. And he may have a little smile to the right, which could be like a little bit of a thrill, duper's delight when you're getting away with something, what could he possibly be getting away with? Well, if he's saying, well, that's what she said in the text, he might be like kind of defying the attorney because the attorney is saying, didn't she say she was having issues with John? He's like, well, that's what she said. Like, I don't know if it's true or not. So kind of like a little bit of a thrill. Uh, then another uh, answer is going to be, I think she, I think it's something she texted. And then he's going to look up to the right, which is, again, is the imagination side. Then when he says she avoided the questions, he looks like this third picture here, uh, you know, with like his whole body, like back, his face is up. And I have my little flowers because this is um, the joint eyebrows on this third picture also is like a sign of frustration. And I have the flowers because to him, romantic, romantically interested in someone means to be at the flower stage. And I think they were both misunderstanding each other here. I really honestly don't believe that Brian Higgins was trying to be 
evasive because it's clear he was interested in her, but just for him, the meaning of the words were a little different than what Alan was trying to say. So I don't think he was being like evasive. Like, no, I wasn't interested in her. Like he was like, yeah, I was interested in her romantic. I'm not going to go there. Romantic. I'm not going to go there. So let's see what the video is. It was clear to me she was upset. And she said, I don't care too much about that other girl. Right. Well, at least that's what she said in text. Yes. Smile. What I'm asking you is that what she said in text, Mr. Higgins, it's not a trick question. That's what she said in text. Right. Um, there you go. She said something along the lines of satisfaction. Uh, I'm just trying to be realistic. There's cracks in the relationship. It's far from perfect. Posture right? her up. I think that's something she texted. All right. And you'll Looking agree that up. during the, the course of these texts, you were constantly asking for clarity and explanation from her. Were you not? During our communication, I did ask for clarity. Many times. Yes. You saw it, correct? Yes. And she pretty much wouldn't answer you, correct? She was non-committal, I would say. Which is why you were saying in your texts, why won't you answer the question? And she would parry and not answer that one either, correct? Well, I didn't want to be stuck in the middle of anything. That's not my question. I'm asking you whether or not she would answer your question about clarity specifically. She avoided, qu she avoided questions about text. Right. And that was frustrating. There you go. Now, here is the eyebrow joint together which is frustration. And yes, Alan is going to say it was frustrating to you. And that is exactly what his body's saying. Frustration. So one more time, let's go back and watch it in slow motion. Okay. So again, this is what we're going to watch for when he says, that's what she said. Uh, after, you know, going back and forth with Alan Jackson, the attorney, he has a little bit of a satisfaction look to his face. Then when he says, I think that's something she texted, he has uh, also a little bit of looking up to the right. Uh, and then when he's finally saying that she avoided questions, you've got the frustration, the joint eyebrows. So let's go back to the video and watch for these things. But now in slow motion. Big deal. Correct. It was clear to me she was upset. And she said, I don't care too much about that other girl, right? Well, at least that's what she said in text, yes. That's what I'm asking you, is that what she said in text, Mr. Higgins, it's not a trick question. That's what she said in text. Right. Now a little smile, um, satisfaction, face, like, yes, yeah, I'll, said I'll give you the answers. The I'll get of, you later, Alan. Uh, I'll get you in the parking lot. I'm just trying to be realistic. Looking up to the right. There's cracks in the relationship. It's far from perfect. Is that right? I think that's something she texted. Now, All looking right. up to the right. And you'll agree that during the, the course of these texts, you were constantly asking for clarity and explanation from her. Were you not? During our communication, I did ask for clarity. Many times. Yes. You saw it, correct? Yes. And she pretty much wouldn't answer you, correct? She was non-committal, I would say. Which is why you were saying in your texts, why won't you answer the question? And she would parry and not answer that one either, correct? Well, I didn't want to be stuck in the middle of anything. That's not my question. I'm asking you whether or not she would answer your question about clarity specifically she avoided she avoided questions Posture about that. change and that was frustrating because brown and eyebrows are joint so that's that now we're going to continue watching the same clip but now we're going to watch for something a little bit different so let me switch here to the slide and show you guys the next one that we're going to go over here here you go so when Alan Jackson in the same context is going to say, well, you know, that being romantically attracted to her or interested in her would put you in a very awkward situation, right? Correct. And he's going to say, not at all, not at all, because uh, her boyfriend being murdered and me having romantic text messages with her wouldn't be awkward at all for me. And then he has all these things going on in his face. So let's go over them. Here he has uh, 
full forehead uh, frown, right? A little bit of a forehead frown. And that could be worry, shock, and anxiety. That's where it shows in our faces. Also, he does have the joint eyebrow here, like he has the thing here. And that is where either impatience or frustration or focus comes in. Now, thinking about the context, if he's talking about, first of all, Karen, that he is frustrated because he was interested in her. She didn't really give him much attention after she played games with him. She initiated, you know, kind of like not good. But anyways, does does it make sense that he would have some anxiety because, well, now he's in the trial for murder and he might be, uh, I mean, he might be like coming off as sus suspicious. That's what I'll say because he was talking to her uh, also in the, you know, between the eyebrows, could it be frustration because he was trying to talk to her? Yes. Now, actually his face here shows a lot of stuff. Even the grief under the eyes, his face is showing. Uh, his lips are pursed together, you know, and he is showing like just so much uh, emotion here in this part. I don't know if it means that he is frustrated, if it means that, I don't know. I just, this is what, this is what we're seeing here. So now I'm going to put the video back to uh, normal speed and we're just going to watch this next portion where they're going to go over this. Would it put it, would it put you in a very awkward uh, position? And he's going to say, not at all, even though the truth should probably be yeah, I mean, that would be very awkward because I had no idea what was going on. She just started texting me out of the blue. And of course, you know, her boyfriend dying, it's awful. And yes, I, it would put me in a terrible situation, right? That would be probably the truth. But I understand we're just watching. We're not sitting there, you know, in the witness stand. So let's see the next interaction. Because you were very interested in her romantically at that point, correct? I was attracted to her. I don't know that I would say very interested in her. You texted things like, More? "Come on, why did you get my number and reach out? That's a quote from the text we just read, correct? I did ask that, yes. You said, now what? Is that right? Now what? What? Yes. What? You texted, what? so now what? Correct? She said, what, what? Yes. You texted, I would hang out, meaning with you. Mm. Yes. Correct? You were showing interest in her. Yes. You were showing romantic interest in her. I wouldn't say it was romantic. I was trying to vet it out. So was well, it as a friend? To, you weren't seeing if she wanted to go see a, a ball game with you as a buddy, right? Not really, no. No, you were showing romantic interest in her, weren't you? I was trying to vet out what is, what's her yeah, like what is interest she want? in me legitimate. It was very normal for me I, to I'm have not that him here. question in my mind when I didn't initiate this, He's she did. Confused. And I think it was a fair question just He's to try to find out. Confusion. You were showing romantic interest in Karen Reed, weren't you? I was interested, but I don't think I was at the romantic phase. He's looking like he's when telling I say the romantic, truth. Well, what do you mean by romantic? What's the romantic I think phase? they do have both. I think both of them just have different interpretations of what's going on. Like at, the way Alan Jackson is asking him, it's like, did you have a romantic interest? He was like, I don't know. I was talking to her. She started texting me. Like, I'm trying to find out what the hell does she want? And then Alan keeps asking him and he's like, I don't know. Like he, his body is responding normally to that question for him. I believe they have different. Sending somebody flowers. Sending somebody dating? flowers. Sure. Well, there's a difference between dating and hanging out. I mean, oh. it's kind of hard to date somebody when you have a boyfriend. Well, it's that's a little, you know, not, not he's not trying a, to put that into the testimony. People, right. Happens all the time. Well, I think I asked that question too. Right. That's not my question. Yeah. My so question. now on these two, on these two questions, uh, these two answers, I should, I should say, Brian Higgins is kind of like throwing, you know, throwing punches at Alan Jackson because he's like, okay, we're going to play this game. So now I'm going to get you. I'm going to put in something like, I'm going to pretend like I'm dumb and I'm going to put in a sentence that is going to make your client look bad because I asked her if she had a boyfriend. And then Alan's like, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what I'm asking you. 
question is you seem to have a problem admitting that you had a romantic interest in my client. Is there a like, reason for that? I don't know. I was attracted to her. Out. Right. Yeah. Physically attracted. I would bang. I thought she was an attractive woman. Romantically attractive. I'm not going to go there. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. Of course, you're not going to go there because that would put you in a very right now, awkward position, wouldn't it, sir? Josh, not at all. So the the objection sustained is to the form. You can ask it differently, and looking down, that answer will be stricken now. Sorry, all of the things. May I? Yes. You were sexually attracted to her. I was physically attracted to her. Yes. Sexually attracted to her was my question. Well, I think oh, in the text Alan. I said you're hot. Okay. Uh, Alan, so my Alan, question again, Alan. Mr. Higgins, you seem to not want to answer my question. My question is, were you or were you not sexually attracted to my client? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. We all we all know, Brian. Look at him. He's laughing. We all know you wanted that. We all know you were trying to hook up with Karen. You were like, wow, this lady is beautiful. She's texting me. Yes. What do I, what do I got to do? Like, tell me, tell me, what do I got to do? But <laughs> she, he's laughing. He's laughing. He's like. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to bang her. <laughs> I'm just using their language, okay? So anyways, back to not at all. When he said that, his whole face just, you know, showed for, ah, don't go to the next slide yet. Showed frustration, showed, uh, you know, worry, showed grief. Grief because he possibly lost the potential, you know, the girl that he was hoping and dreaming would come to be something. Do I think Brian Higgins was like, we're in love with her? No, but he was definitely interested. He was definitely like excited because this girl is texting him. That I think is, is what was happening in his mind. So next. What? Is that right? Yes. You texted. So now what? Correct. Yes. You texted. I would hang out meaning with you. Yes. Correct. You're showing interest in her. Yes. You're showing romantic interest in her? I wouldn't say it was romantic. I was trying to vet it out. Well, you weren't trying to, you weren't seeing if she wanted to go see a, a ball game with you as well, right? Not really, no. No, you were showing romantic interest there, weren't you? I was trying to vet out what is, what's her interest in me legitimate. It was very normal for me to have that question in my mind when I didn't initiate this, she did. And I think it was a fair question just to try to find out. You were showing romantic interest in Karen Reed, weren't you? I was interested, but I don't think I was at the romantic phase. Okay. When I say romantic, well, what do you mean by romantic? What's the romantic phase? Sending somebody flowers? Dating? <laughs> Well, there's a difference between dating and hanging out. I mean, oh. it's kind of hard to date somebody when you have a boyfriend. What do you guys oh, think? Not, what do you guys you. think I, is the romantic phase? Please, please tell me what is a romantic definition to you? Is it sending somebody flowers or is there something else? Is it just like texting and being interested? Uh, you know, having an attraction? Is it dating? Is it kissing? What is the romantic phase to you guys? I want to know. I think I asked that question too. That's not my question. My question is, you seem to have a problem admitting that you had a romantic interest in my client. Is there a reason for that? I was attracted to her. Right. Physically attracted. I thought she was an attractive woman. Romantically attracted. I'm not going to go there. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Of course you're not going to go there because that would put you in a very awkward position, wouldn't it, sir? Josh, not at all. So the, the objection sustained is to the form. You can ask it differently. And can I continue that going right here? Sorry, <clears throat> May I? Yes. You were sexually attracted to her. I was physically attracted to her, yes. Wait, sexually attracted to her was my question. Well, I think in the text I said you're hot. Okay. You wanted to get so naked? Did you seem to not answer my question. My question is, were you or were you not sexually attracted Did to you want to get naked? Yes. Okay. He's blushing. Um, you're think, saying things like, <laughs> Continue um, on this part. What do you want from me? And I want the real deal. Those are your words, correct? Yes. And the real deal with you would be to date her. To get involved with her. Romantically, correct? No. The real deal is what? What did you mean by I want the real deal? Like a relationship. What kind of relationship? Eventually, like, but I don't think he meant while this they were the texting. Wants, a, a real it was already romantic. I think he means, it's you possible. know, he wanted to know what was going on. And she was answering with things like, He wanted to know what was going on. And if, yes, if it came to be something, then yes, it could be romantic, but I don't think he's trying to be evasive here. I just think he doesn't speak the same language as Alan. When you said now what? Right she answered, here. I don't know. Correct? Yes, she did. When you asked, so now what? What? She answered, I'm sorry, when you said, so now what? She answered, now what? What? Can right? I get a what? What? Well, I don't have it in what, front what, of me, what, so what? I can't agree with you. If you if, I'd like to see what you're referring to. Well, you just read it about 10 minutes ago. Would you Would you quarrel if I don't you have just, the you're, report? You're giving me portions of it. You were giving portions of it by Mr. Lally as well. Okay. Right? Did you text something like, now what? And she I, responded something like, now what? what? I think on one occasion she did, yes. Okay. Um, and you remember you just read a text where she texted, I'm sorry, you texted, what do you want from me? And her responsive text was, I don't know. Correct? I think that was one of the texts. Again, with this theme of her being non-committal, one way or the other. Is that right? Well, I, that's not how I would interpret it as a theme, no. Well, didn't you just say she was non-committal? That was your word, not mine. I did, but as I told you, it's been a process of trying to suss it out and see what this was all about. Right. So when you were sussing it out and determining whether or not you were 
advance this the business, things that happen women because of women sometimes well, not one huh? person advances it i think that's a, that's a joint thing look at where you are guy you're like when you texted turning yourself into you a pretzel because of this responded, lady it doesn't exist didn't she she did yes and she never once in any of those texts expressed anger or hatred for john Hickey, correct no, no not at all but in fact she texted more Good. she indicated more of frustration with the immediate family the would, kids she didn't want to have kids in its totality i would say yes um and then on january 23rd as you just saw she just stopped communicating with you altogether, correct? Until the 29th, yes. Correct. Do you know what the term ghosted means? I think I have a general idea, yes. She sort of ghosted you, didn't she? I wouldn't agree with that. That was frustrating to you, that she just stopped communicating, wasn't it? No, not at all. You've been moving through this mindset of exploring a romantic interest with a beautiful woman, thought was interested in you, just like that. It's done, right? That's no. Hold on, I'm going to make this a normal normal speed real quick, because this is the section that we're, we're watching right now. I think that's just so mean uh, from Jackson, because it's... I mean, it's true, I think. A, you know, in his mind, a beautiful woman is reaching out. He's like, really? Are you really attracted to me? Like, why? Since when? That's what it sounded like in his text messages. And I don't I don't like this part where Jackson's like, well, she didn't want you anymore. She ghosted you. And he's like, huh. <laughs> like I want to cry. So what communication did you have with her after January 23rd? Well, she texted me on January 29th. We keep know. saying that, but you know what I'm getting to. January 29th was her informing you that a tragedy had occurred. John had died, right? I'm not talking about that, Mr. Higgins, so I don't, I don't want to keep playing games. All right, so that's what that's what we talked about. No more of that. After the um, 23rd. So that's what I want to show you guys. It's pretty much the, the, the little pissing, p pissing, I can't pronounce that correctly match between the the defense attorney alan jackson who is on fire today by the way and mr higgins here so let's take a look at this slide uh this is jackson with his face of like i'm gonna grill you today she goes to you and then jackson says i don't want to keep playing games with you mr higgins so the judge intervenes says children children of mine we have talked about this on the sidebar you're both going to be on timeout then brian higgins looks at jackson and gives him the tongue and this time i don't think he's like i'm getting away with something i think he's really going like i win you lose la 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 so let's go back to the video and watch that i don't want to keep playing games all right, so that's what, that's what we talked about. No more of Sorry. that. The tongue. After the 23rd, <laughs> or up to the... So then we get a break, and we come to this part where he is saying he did leave the waterfall and drove to Fairview. Now, I just thought it was interesting. I was, like, watching it, and I saw his face do all kinds of things right so let's see what what is his face doing and what are we talking about here we're talking about alan jackson is going to ask him about john like did he greet you he's going to say yes i believe so he's going to do a big swallow and some of these faces is going to make it's kind of like maybe pensive uh maybe Let's see. Let's watch the video and see what you guys think. Well, I, I think, as I previously testified, that it's in slow it motion. OK, guys, he doesn't talk like that. I didn't always take them up on their offer, and I usually did the Irish exit. And I so that doesn't make any sense because he's asking, why did you decide to go to the waterfall? He's like, well, because it was a long day. Okay, so if it's a long day, you're going to go home, not go to a bar. Second, he said he's, he usually doesn't take them up on their offer. So this time he did. Okay, that actually kind of can make sense. And then he says that I usually do the Irish exit, which means he goes, uh, he leaves the place without saying bye to anyone. But that doesn't make any sense either in this context. And I decided because but, okay. of the weather and everything else and it had been we'll a go long with that. day that I would go down there and join them. Didn't have anything to do... You knowing that Karen Reed 
might be a whole lot of fun. It couldn't have because I didn't I think know he sounds she pretty or honest John here. O'Keefe would even be there. Very straight I didn't know forward. who was going to be there. I didn't know who was going to be there. Wife. Do you have any text messages with no reaction, Brian see? about going to the waterfall? I don't recall. In this case, yes, his forehead is frowning a little bit, but I do believe it's because he's trying to focus on the question. He's not really reacting to the question about knowing if Karen is there or not. He's just like, I didn't know she was going to be there and just trying to pay attention to the question. He, he told me about it at the hillside. And once he got to the waterfall, he got to the waterfall, obviously, before you did. He did, I think shortly before, yes. Any text communications between you and Brian Albert about who was at the waterfall or who was expected to come to the waterfall? No, not that I recall. Okay, so now let's try to watch for this, uh, that he's going to take a deep breath. Kind of like, okay, I'm done with these answers. That was tough, but now I'm ready for the next phase. He's going to look uh, to the side right up again, probably to his uh, attorney, and a big swallow. And I do believe that this is when he's, uh, the attorney is going to ask him, did John say hi to you? Now, you've already indicated, and I don't think we need to go into a lot of detail about this, but I want to ask you just in general, uh, the mood at the waterfall was good spirits, correct? It was, it was great. Ben was playing. You did not see any sort of tension between John and Karen. I did not. Um, nobody seemed overly intoxicated. No. I mean, you had had several drinks before you even got to the waterfall, right? I think it was three to four. Did you drink additionally at the waterfall? I did, yes. Did you drink whiskey? Or remember, remember, he drove after this. So three to four drinks, then he got to the waterfall, had more drinks, and then he drove. But he's not the one being charged for DUI. Must be nice. For beer or what? Whiskey. Okay. Uh, how many did you, do you think you had? I couldn't put a number on it. Uh, at least a couple. But if you don't, you left so like six drinks at least? In your personal vehicle and drove over to, that's the Jeep. Drove the Jeep, over to yes. the waterfall, correct? I drove over to the waterfall. I'm I, sorry. I was at the waterfall. Left the waterfall, drove over to 34 Fairview. I did, yes. Um, okay, so right there, I think I see some sadness in his face. Uh, I don't know if he's remembering what happened or if he's just reminiscing the fact that that John is, you know, that what happened to John was terrible. So right here at 504... Just make this, it's at 504 38. I'm trying to go to, so let me make this one two times. And once he got to the waterfall, he got to the waterfall because it's hard to get to the exact place sometimes. No, not that I recall. No, there's his deep breath and adjustment. There's his looking at somebody. Did you guys catch that? John and Karen, I did not. Nobody seemed overly intoxicated? No. You had several drinks before you got to the waterfall, right? I think it was three or four. Did you drink additionally at the waterfall? I did, yes. Did you drink whiskey or beer or what? Whiskey. Okay. Uh, how many did you think you had? I couldn't put a number on it. At least a couple. And ultimately you left from there in your personal vehicle and drove over to... Now, when he talks about driving over to the house, I see some sadness in his facial expression. Please watch and see if you guys pick up on that. And I'm going to do it in slow motion. That's the G. Drove the Jeep, over to yes. the waterfall, correct? I drove over to the waterfall. Oh, yeah. I'm I, sorry. I was at the water. Left the waterfall, drove over to the third. Drove over to Fairview. the Fairview. Look. I did, yes. Now, looks up to the attorney. Um, looks like he's remembering something in this face, you know? <clears throat> looks like he's a little sad. <sighs> John right he's not looking like he's looking at the attorney he's not looking like he's looking uh that that way he's you know when you look at you're kind of looking at the space you're just like your your eyes are lost that's what I feel like he looks like he walked in lost 
to the water and sad uh were you already there yes he greeted you you indicated Don. correct yes i believe so karen walked in with him yes but she did not greet you did she i think they kind of went like that different directions right yes did she greet you no right so she walked so she didn't greet him but when he does talk about going to the fairview property that's when i see his face doing a few different things which we have here you know kind of like a reminiscing or sadness i don't know exactly we'll see we'll see so let's keep going now i'm gonna make it a little faster we got about two minutes here Lauren, come over and say hi to you i didn't have any interaction with her that night no so safe to say that throughout that evening once she was sidled up next to john o'keefe or the friends that she was with uh she never turned back around and came over and even acknowledged you correct that's correct. So she basically oh. ignored you the entire evening. That's not how I interpret it, no. I didn't ask yeah, you, you did. It. I asked you what she did. Did she ignore you or did she pay attention to you? Objection. You can go ahead and answer that. Did she ignore you? Uh, no. <laughs> so she paid attention to you. Came over and said hello, shook your hand, gave you a hug. That sucks, man. To, to... <laughs> that sucks to have to admit in national television, right? Because it's the trial is being streamed everywhere. That, well, did, did he ignore you? Yeah. Did she ignore you? Yeah, she did. Well, just because somebody didn't come over doesn't mean they ignored you. Did she do those three things? Hug? What was the other thing? Say hello, shake your hand, give you a hug. No, she did not. No, she didn't do any of those things, did she? No. It's like you didn't even exist. I think that's dramatic. No, I, I, I don't look at it that way. Did she ignore you or not? No, she did not ignore me. So she, what did she do to not ignore you? She was working. Can I answer now? Sure. She, oh. In my opinion, she was working the room, talking to people, saying hello, catching up. Right. The one person she didn't come over to talk to and say hello to and catch up with is you. Well, I don't, I don't know that I was the only person, but I was one of the people that she didn't say hello to, yes. She did just sort of like a stranger. I don't feel that way, no. She actually positioned herself away from you at the other end of the table on the opposite side in the corner. Isn't that right? I don't know where she was all night, no. Did I don't know. Did that upset you that she ignored you or didn't pay attention to you? I did not feel ignored and didn't upset me at all. But it bothered you enough to send her a text, didn't it? No, it was, it was a flirtatious text. It was just, that was it. It bothered you enough to send her a text that said, um, with six M's behind it. Okay. And, well... <laughs> Correct. Well, it wasn't like that. It was six um, well. M's. It. Just um, well. Six M's. Okay. You took all the M's and you're like, um, well. And he does say right here was a flirtatious text. And, you know, she's with John. She's with John that day. So stop flirting with the people. Stop flirting with the people that are unavailable, please. So here we have, um, well. When he is talking to the attorney, he does have a little bit of the frown and the forehead, uh, kind of like angry, you know, because yeah, of course, this is not, this is not a cool subject for him at all. Uh, here is a screenshot of the waterfall bar, this great image here, when Mr. with the Bryans, right? The Bryans are at the waterfall and we have Higgins on the left, we got Albert on the right and they're doing the plain thing and then brian higgins is saying is she looking is she looking she said i'm hot of course this is not true but you know that's kind of how it, it it felt like because they're like you know they're playing like not practicing fighting like the defense is saying but they're like playing around with each other grabbing their each other's butt and just like uh, wrestling a little bit and karen is there and he was like texting with karen a week ago so he wants to like get her attention, like I'm here. And then she doesn't say hi to him. She doesn't do anything. He texts her. She's with John this night. He says, well, like, you know, are you just going to, which is, I think it's messed up from her part because she played with this guy and then she just stopped texting him. She should have said, listen, we got back together. Um, you know, I apologize for confusing you or anything. And then just, you know, give this guy some type of uh, closure because it's messed up. I think it's messed up. 
But then, but then Alan Jackson is like, she ignored you, right? Ha 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 ha. Look at Alan Jackson. This is the exact expression. He's like, ha 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 ha. She ignored you, right? It wasn't exactly at this time, but it was um uh very close. And then he said, Well, maybe she didn't see it. And then Karen was like, Oh, I saw it. Like, I saw it, bro. Don't even, don't even pretend I saw every text that you sent. I just didn't want to answer you. That's all. And now changing gears a little bit, we're going to go to the part where Alan Jackson is asking about this tall, handsome guy that was in the house. Well, I don't think they say handsome. I think they say male tall male and Brian Higgs is gonna say ah maybe it was somebody picking up somebody else but he did testify in the past that he saw a man in the house and people are saying Mr. O'Keefe never went into the house the 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 people in the circle of trust are saying Mr. O'Keefe never went into the house the guy never went into the house and here's Brian Higgins uh being confronted about this prior testimony where he did say there was a tall male in the house. He's not saying it was John, but anyways, let's see this interaction. Did you say that? Did you say tall, dark haired male into the house while you were there? I said they might have. Did you say they might have? Yes. And that was in reference to somebody's yeah, brother. Yes. Isn't it true that you indicated that? So, did you guys catch any of that? Did you guys see any of the body doing any of the things that we have been talking about? Because I sure did. So, let's go back one by one and see what did Brian Higgins' face just do when he asked him, did you see? Did you say there was a dark, tall male who entered the house? So, we start on the top here. His face is kind of like side to the right and up, uh, kind of like an indignation, a little bit of anger. Then he looks down, which is like avoidance, right? Avoiding eye contact. Then I don't know what these two faces are. We're going to go back to the video, watch it slow. And all of this happens until he finishes up with a beautiful tongue jut, meaning I got away with something. So we go back to the video now and we're going to watch it in slow motion. Let me put it back to the right place here. Right there and see if we can catch these faces. Here we go. I'm going to make it a 0.5 speed. So that's going to be very slow. And go. Oh. Male Let's watch his face. I said they might. That's have. the side mouth. Did you say they might have? Yes. Maybe like an indignation. Ask me that. I'm confused. And that was in reference to somebody's brother. No question yes. pending. Looking down, avoidance, but that's okay. Could be nervousness because, you know, of the position he's in. Now he looks up to the right. He looks at, looks at somebody. His eyes look around, which that's not a good sign usually. Adjust his posture again. Let's get comfortable. What is going on in his mind? Now it's fine. Nothing is happening. 
Now he goes again. He does a little side eye adjust. Isn't it true that? And attention. And tongue jut. Isn't it true? <laughs> it's like a, a frog. Isn't it the frog? The frog is the one that does that. Isn't it true? I guess not. <laughs> or maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what's coming next. How many, how far would you say it was from the edge of the driveway over to your Jeep? From where the back of my Jeep was parked? Correct. Maybe a foot or two, or could have been even with the, the edge of the driveway? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. My, it's probably a bad question on my part. When you left the house, as you started to walk down the driveway toward the, your Jeep, how long of a walk is that? Across the yard to the, you know, down the driveway? To get to your Jeep? Short. 30 feet? Maybe. Okay. Um, during the course of you walking out the door, heading to your Jeep, you didn't see out anything out of the ordinary in the yard, correct? No. You certainly didn't see a body in the yard. Of course not. Watch. Now, you get in your car, and it's facing directly toward the flagpole, correct? Well, it's... Facing directly up the street, the flagpole would be off to the one o'clock. Right. So just a few degrees off face. to the right, the flagpole is, correct? It's off to the right. Just so he touches his face when he's talking about the flag pole, like where, where the Jeep is facing. So let's see this illustration here. Oh, no, stop. He when this light keeps playing, I tell it, I didn't say play yet. Okay. So here's the Fairview house. Here is Mr. Higgins leaving the house, and he has to walk about 30 feet to go to his Jeep. With the Jeep, which is parked perfectly, right, with the back to the mailbox, the edge of the road. We know exactly where the Jeep is because he told us so. Now, here's his face on top of the house when he, hear, when he says, I didn't see anything, okay? Kind of angry to me. Now, when he says this phrase, Jeep was facing the street flagpole, he touches his face. Now, touching his face could be just like a pacifying because sometimes our brain requires us to self-soothe to release anxiety. Why is there anxiety here exactly? I don't know. But then as we move to his face, this one is going to be a lot. So we have a lot of information here. Uh, when he says, I didn't see anything, he looks at someone to the side. Maybe his attorney. I don't know. He's going to swallow and look down. The mouth corners are going to be down. He's going to swallow, look down to the left. He's going to look up to the attorney again. His eye and movements, his eyes and mo shoulders will make movements. Okay. So the big swallows indicate nervousness and anxiety. The down mouth expression, unhappy, despondent, depressed, angry, or tense. It could be all, either one of those. Looking down to the left after he swallows, it could mean internal dialogue, feelings, someone talking to themselves. This can help you detect a lie. If you ask someone a question, they look down to the right. They're creating a memory instead of remembering something. So in this situation, when he's saying, I didn't see anything, he's not looking to the right. He's not creating a memory, right? He's looking to the left, which means he's remembering something. Eye movements in simple terms, if a person is remembering something that they saw, okay, so this tracks. Their eyes will move upward. If they're recalling something they heard, they're going to look to the side and tilt their head. If they're recalling a feeling or emotion, they will look down and to the right. So he's looking down to the right. No, down to the left. Which means what? That he's looking at something that happened, a fact, because he's not creating a memory. Right. So now let's make this part of the video slow motion. 
to see if we can catch any of these faces in real time. Just a few degrees. I don't know how many degrees, but it's off to the right. Well, you just said one o'clock. You're a yes. former military guy, right? I am. Okay. One o'clock means one o'clock on, on a watch. 12 o'clock is due north or right in front of you. One o'clock is just a few degrees. Hold on. I think it's over here. Let me try to find the exact place. Flagpole, correct? If I did, I, I would have done something did. to help him. I okay. Here, it's coming up. It's coming up. And, you know, here he seems very angry. If I did, I would have done something to help him. I totally believe this answer. Okay, but let's keep asked going. you if you saw one. No, I did not. And that's because there was no body there, correct? I didn't see anything. Now let's watch the face expressions. Because if there was a body there... Looking to... He looked at somebody, right? Which is probably his attorney or somebody in the audience. Next, he's going to look down, swallows, and the mouth corners are down. So the big swallows could just be nervousness, anxiety, anxiety. The mouth uh, corners of the, the mouth, it could be tense. It could be depressed. It could be angry. All of those would apply here. Then Certainly what else? Objection. So he does a little shoulder, you know, eye movement and shoulder adjustment here. He looks down. Looks at the attorney and looks down to the left. So again... If you ask somebody a question, they look down to the right, they're creating a memory instead of remembering something, which means that if they're looking down to the left, they're remembering something instead of creating a memory. So what is he remembering here when he says, I didn't see anything? Now he looks up, readjusts his uh, coat, uh, his jacket. What is the name of this? His suit. He readjusts it, looks to the attorney again. Where exactly looks did you straight go forward to the attorney, like you know, let's get the question. I went back to the Canton police station. And that's what that interaction was. So again, this is how this looked in slow motion. All the faces. Uh, if you guys want to take a screenshot, I'm gonna take myself out of it. And that is what the body language is saying here. So nervous and anxious, angry, depressed, or tensed, having, um, looking at, remembering something, and the eye movement, the shoulder shrug, I think is just really pacifying here because he's just trying to like get himself comfortable in some type of way. So next. So on this one, Alan Jackson is going to start asking him about um, going to the, the police station. And he's going to say there has been a lot of evolution to, the, to your story over the years. And Brian Higgins is going to say, I don't understand the question. He's going to look down, close his eyes for a moment, which is a sign of being nervous, hesitant, avoidance of eye contact. So let's see how that looks on the video. Morning. Why did you go to Canton Police Department that night, that morning? Repeats the question. What's the question? Why did you go to Why Canton Police go to that Canton morning? Police Department that morning. The morning when I, the morning when I left 34th Fairview, the Friday into Saturday. Correct. To move two vehicles. There's been quite an evolution of that story over the years, has there not? Gonna look down. I don't understand the question. All right, let's talk about that for a second. You had yeah. an initial interview with Massachusetts State Keep Police going. on February 3rd, 2022. Yes. Correct? And you indicated during the course of that interview, which was just a couple of days, five days, after the events in question, that you left Brian Albert's house, went to Canton PD to, quote, fulfill some administrative obligations, end quote. Correct? You later said, when you testified in front of the grand jury on April 28th, that you went, and went to Canton PD to do, quote, administrative work. Correct? Yes. 
You've never mentioned. I said administrative things. You said administrative work was your testimony in your transcript. I believe I believe it was things, but okay. Tomato, okay. tomato, guys. Can we agree, Come on. Mr. Higgins, that you didn't mention anything about moving cars around, correct? Well, that would be administrative. So when uh... you say I went to Canton PD to do administrative work or administrative obligations, you meant moving your car, your personal vehicle? Yes. Okay. Um, although you didn't say that you were going there to move your personal vehicle, right? No, I said I, did, I didn't move my personal vehicle. I moved work vehicles. Or either one. You just traded off vehicles, moved them out of the way, right? I moved two. I, the purpose for going back there was to move two work vehicles. And the re reality is you had gotten there, you had gotten Canton PD uh, earlier in the afternoon and actually moved some other vehicles, traded vehicles, didn't you? I swapped vehicles out. That's correct. Right. And you left the vehicles that you now claim you had to go move exactly where they were, even though you knew a blizzard was coming, correct? Why? That is correct, yes. So you didn't to go move to the cars a few hours earlier knowing that you just have to come back and move those cars a few hours later. Right? I was more concerned to go eat and have a drink because it had been a long day. So wouldn't you want to move those cars early on so you wouldn't have to go all the way back to Canton and play uh, you know, parking lot with these cars in the middle of the night? Not really. <clears throat> Mr. Higgins, you weren't- That's what we're gonna go back to right now, okay? <sighs> Mr. Higgins. Now we start seeing some 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 things in his face, some attitude, some like pretending to be dumb. Uh, this question just now: Why wouldn't you move the cars when you were there, so you wouldn't have to go back to Canton? He shakes his head, no disagreement. Like it's a silly question. Like that doesn't make any sense. Even though he was there, move the cars so you can go drink, and then you don't have to come back to move the cars later. He's like, I don't know. Looks directly at Alan Jackson again. Then he does the lips down in disapproval and frustration. Then he does the eye contact avoidance. Then he says, not really, with a little smile, like a little duper delight. Like, I get a thrill of being able to answer you whatever the hell I want to answer you. And then also he has the mouth corner up, the thrill to deceive or others. Kind of like a duper's delight. So. We're going to go back and do it again in slow motion. Morning. Why did you go to Canton Police Department that night? That morning? Can you repeat the question? Let me make this a little bit faster, just for this part. What's the question? Okay. Why did you go to the Canton Police Department that morning? The morning when I, the morning when I left 34 Fairview, the Friday into Saturday? Correct. To move two vehicles. There's been quite an evolution of that story over the years, has there not? I don't understand the question. All right, let's talk about that for a second. You had an initial interview with Massachusetts State Police on February 3rd, 2022. Yes. Correct? And you indicated during the course of that interview, which was just a couple of days, five days, after the events in question, that you left Brian Albert's house, went to Canton PD to, quote, fulfill some administrative obligations, end quote. Correct? Yes. You later said, when you testified in front of the grand jury on April 28th, that you went, and can't, went to Canton PD to do, quote, administrative work, correct? Yes. You never mentioned. I said administrative things. You said administrative work was your testimony in your transcript. I believe, I believe it was things, but okay. Okay. Can we agree, Mr. Higgins, that you didn't mention anything about moving cars around, correct? Well, that would be administrative. So when you say I went to Canton PD to do administrative work or administrative obligations, you meant moving your car, your personal vehicle? Yes. Okay. Um, although you didn't say that you were going there to move your personal vehicle, right? No, I said I, did, I didn't move my personal vehicle. I moved work vehicles. Or either one. You just traded off vehicles, moved them out of the way, right? I moved two. I, the purpose for going back there was to move two work vehicles. And the re reality is you had gotten there, you had gotten Canton PD uh, earlier in the afternoon and actually moved some other vehicles, traded vehicles, didn't you? I swapped vehicles out. That's correct. Right. And you left the vehicles that you now claim you had to go move exactly where they were, even though you knew a blizzard was coming, correct? That is correct, yes. So you didn't move the cars a few hours earlier, knowing that you just have to come back and move those cars a few hours later. Don't look so confused. I was more concerned to go eat and have a drink because it had been a long day. I'm sure so you were. So you want to move those cars early on? So you okay, wait, let me pause here because for some reason when I put it in slow motion, it just went way backwards. So I just want to show you this one more time. This is what we're going to look for now, the faces. Why wouldn't you want to move the cars when you were there so you wouldn't have to go back to Canton? Uh, 
<laughs> he's going to shake his head no. He's going to look directly at the defense attorney. Lips down to his approval frustration. Looks confused. Eye contact avoidance. Not really duper's delight. So this is what I want to do in slow motion. Let me try this time. All the way back to Canton and play. Takes head no disagreement. Uh, you know, Lips go down. Cars in the middle of the night. Disapproval, frustration, and not really. After saying not really, a little bit of a smile. Mm -hmm. Like I got away with oh, that. Mr. Instance. Higgins, you weren't actually at. Canton PD to do administrative work at 1 30 in the morning. Were you? Were you? I was, were, I you? Was... were you? Hmm. We're going to find out more when the trial returns. <laughs> so now let's see what else do we have next? A few hours later. Right? I was more concerned to go eat and have a drink because it had been a long day. So wouldn't you want to move those cars early on so you wouldn't have to go all the way back to Canton and play, uh, you know, parking lot with these cars in the middle of the night? Not really. <laughs> Smile and keep going. You weren't actually at Canton PD to do administrative work at 1.30 in the morning, were you? I was, I was moving the vehicles. I'm sure it's on video. I will now, when he says, I'm sure it's on video, this is what we get here, okay? Because later we're going to find out that apparently the video, there's an issue. There's like an issue with the video. You know when like something happens criminally and the criminal gets rid of the evidence? I don't know what happened in this case, but definitely the video showing the SUV coming into evidence disappeared. Just like the phone was rehomed from Brian Albert. Brian Albert rehomed Chloe the dog. Brian Albert rehomed the home. Brian Albert rehomed the basement. Now we're going to find out the video was rehomed. And so was another phone. I'm not going to tell you which phone because if you don't know, you're going to find out. So when he says, I was moving the vehicles, I'm sure it's on video. He's got a wrinkled forehead uh, in conjunction with the raised eyebrows. The normal interpretation is surprise or skepticism. But to catch the proper interpretation of a raised forehead, look at the mouth. If the mouth is wide open, oh, it is for sure signaling surprise. Now, if the lips are pursed or clenched, then the forehead, forehead is projecting criticism or anger. So because we do have his lips here closed first, we have to go with criticism or anger. And I'm sure that this is no surprise that whenever... Alan Jackson is facing Brian Higgins. There's going to be so much tension, anger, defiance, disapproval, criticism. So none of these faces are surprising to me. Okay. But let's see where we go from here. So then the court goes on a break. And here's a silly, silly joke. You know, the Yannette is saying, let's pretend to smile, even though those text messages don't look good for you, Karen. Then Alan is saying, I can't smile. Those texts are making my job hard. Then Yannette is like, I farted when Lally and I were in the elevator. Karen's like, no. And they all laugh. I know, I know. I'm five years old. I'm five years old, guys. So next, we're going to go to this slide. When um, Al Alan Jackson is going to ask him about, you know, him coming back home. Does he live alone? Where did he sleep? And he does have a lot of face touching on this specific part. 
part portion of the video, uh, especially when they're talking about the call from the chief being around 6.30, which is going to mix up with the fact that Brian Albert called him at 2 a.m. It's going to mix it up. Everything's going to get mixed up now. So his faces are going to be on this specific slide with the face touching and the covering the mouth uh, after he says something. So let's watch where that's going to come up at. I'm going to start here. A little longer from... How long did when it take I, after I moved the for him to get Correct. home from I don't know. PT? I mean, it could have been 15 minutes. It could have been 20 minutes. You live alone? I do. Uh, you did then? Yes. Uh, what did you do when you got home? Uh, I think I had something to eat, maybe a couple more drinks. Thought about Karen. Then you went to bed? I was either on the couch or in the bed watching the news. In any of the prior testimony that you've given in this case, have you ever indicated, ever, that you slept on the couch that night? I don't know. Well, you've reviewed your testimony before you. Well, those you. those would be the two. Those would be the two options. Okay. I didn't ask you about your options. I asked you if you reviewed your testimony before you testified today. It's so me. Yes. Okay. Alan, you don't your be me. Testimony previous to coming in here today. Did you ever testify that you slept on the couch that night? No, I slept in my bed, but I could have started somewhere else. Did you ever testify in the previous hearing? Did you started somewhere else? Not that I know. Did you ever mention a couch in any of your description about what you did when you went home that night? Not that I recall. As a matter of fact, what you did mention under questioning in a different hearing was that you may have gotten something to eat. Okay, here's the finger, which is like a pacifying, you know, like to get to get some tension out because he can't get out. There is no flight or fight for him. He has to stay in this chair. So he's just doing like the touch in the face. I don't know what the heck the couch has to do with anything. Uh, why does it matter if he never said he may have sat in his couch before he, go he went to bed? But, but it must mean something for Alan to be pressing on it. Like then went to bed, you put your stuff on the nightstand next to your bed, correct? That would be the routine, yes. Um, did, did you do that or was that the routine? And he looks to the side, he adjusts his posture. He did not make or receive looks a little any uncomfortable calls after returning home that night. No. Um, so he didn't make or receive any phone calls. He didn't make or receive any phone calls, okay? You were clear when you went to sleep in your prior testimony that you put both your work and your personal phone. You had two at the time, correct? Yes. A, a personal and a, and a work cell phone, right? Yes. You put them both on your bedside table because that's what you do every night. Is that right? Um, most often, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, you were asked whether or not you have a charging station uh, and you said, yeah, it's right on my bedside. I don't know that I don't have a charging station. Right. You said no bedside. In other words, you keep your phone by your bedside on your bedside table. Usually. Uh, you also testified that you did not use your phone that night to go on social media, correct? That's correct. You indicated that you don't go on, you didn't, you know, you didn't go on social media because you don't have social media. You don't use it that, that much. I don't. Good for you, you said, sir. I don't have the gram. Not I'm missing guessing anything. That means Instagram, correct? That is correct. And you don't use Snapchat and you quote, don't do those no, things. Snapchat's correct? kind That's of correct. fun to All make right. the so filters. So you testified that the first call you received after returning home on the 29th was a call from Chief Berkowitz just before 7. Okay, so Chief Berkowitz perks up in a chair, right? He gets really big and tall when we're talking about Chief Berkowitz here. A.M., which woke you up. Is that right? It was It was around 6.30-ish, I think. Okay. And the uh, face. Your testimony touching. previously was. There you go. So it was around 6.30 a.m., and he must touch his face. Why? I don't know. But in this time, but at this time, he's not only touching his face as a form of pacifying, but he's covering his mouth. And covering your mouth is different than just touching your face, right? What does covering your mouth mean? Let's see. Covering your mouth during a conversation 
uh, this always happens, right? Can show extreme anxiety, extreme anxiety or nervousness. Nervousness. There is also a belief that constantly touching the mouth indicates dishonesty, although there is no scientific basis for this. And then when the index finger points vertically up the cheek and the thumb supports, it means the listener is having negative or critical thoughts about the speaker. I'm sure, I'm sure Brian Higgins is having negative and critical thoughts about Alan Jackson. That is not something we need a, an analysis for, okay? So then let me see if the next one, this is what's going to come up now is the face he's going to make when Alan asks him, were you lying that Chief Berkowitz call woke you up? Just the anger, eyebrows together, eye glares, narrowing of the lips. So let's keep watching the video. At some point, at some point before 7 a.m., that call was the one that woke you up. Yes. And it turns out, Mr. Higgins, that that was a lie, wasn't it? No, it wasn't a lie. When you were asked that question at a previous hearing, you didn't know that the person questioning you had your phone records, did you? I assume they did. And you were thereafter confronted with those phone records, correct? I was asked about them, yes. And those phone records established. Here comes the qualifications, right? You were confronted with the phone records? I was asked about them. I assume they did. Here, here comes the qualifying, the Jennifer McCabe answers, which he was doing much better before. Established that you and Brian He's starting to feel the pressure now. Not one. He's but starting to feel the pressure now. At 2.22 a.m. that morning. Let's go, Mr. You Higgins. You were in bed asleep, correct? You're almost out of there. I have no there. recollection of any phone calls. No recollection of any phone there, calls. Jones. Yes. You sure about that? No recollection, yeah, huh? Yes. Thank you. Take a look at those two documents and tell me if you recognize at least the top one. Do they have a page number for him? Okay, actually, let me jump a little bit here to the next one. 606. Yeah. It has my name, my telephone number, correct? And, it's, okay. and it indicates that on January 29th, 2022, at 20, at two. 22 and 35 seconds, you received a call from Brian Albert, duration of one second, correct? Yes. In other words, Brian Albert called you at 222 and 35 seconds, but it looks like you missed the call, correct? I see the one second call, yes. There's a second call just below that. On the same date at 222 and 52 seconds, from you to Brian Albert, do you see that one? Yes. And the duration of that call is 22 seconds, correct? I see that, yes. So 17 seconds after you missed a call, according to these records, from Brian Albert, you called him back, and there was a call lasting 22 seconds. Is that right? That's what the records say. May I approach? Yes. Okay, so before we go to the that's what the records say, I want you guys to watch what is going to happen to his face when we're talking about this. That's what the records say. We got the forehead going here. Then he hands the paper back to the defense attorney. He looks startled here. Then he stares at the attorney and looks down to avoid eye contact again and pumps himself up. Now he looks when the attorney says, and of course you lied about that under oath. He's going to look to the side, kind of like either say objection or do something. Uh, did you lie on their oath? No, I did not. He kind of stares at Alan Jackson like, dude. And then Alan Jackson's <laughs> provoking him in the more. Would you tell us if you did? And then he just laughs. He's like, this guy, man. If I see you outside, Alan, I'm going to show you my snow plow. So let's see this interaction now in slow motion so we can catch all these faces in real time. Hold on.
Coming. One second. And here we go. Gives the paper back. Eyes are wide open. Looks down. Looks at the attorney again. So the avoids that contact is, again. We were speaking to Brian Albert in the middle of the night, approximately three hours before Mr. O'Keefe's body was found in his yard. Correct? No, that's not correct. Because they're denying speaking. And that was five nothing. minutes before 2.27 a.m. when there was a Google search for how long to die in the cold, correct? Jackson. Hmm. Is it all connected? And then, of course, you lied about that under oath in that Look at his face. Looking saying, to the side. I don't remember this. Can he say that? Can this Jackson. guy say that about me? Did you, in fact, tell the truth at the prior proceeding when you said, I don't remember that phone call. I always tell the truth. Did you lie under oath, sir? No, I did not. Would, Would you tell, tell us, us if you did? did? Jackson, you are. And look at his smile. This guy. Now, this smile disappears real quick call. because the phone call is In back. Phone records, correct? Look at that. No smile. That's what's reflected by the record. And 22 seconds is quite an amount of time. Would you agree? It's 22 seconds. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, it's about this long with the court's permission. The court, the court doesn't does not allow. give permission. That's argument, Mr. <laughs> Jackson. If we were court. to count off 22 seconds, that's an uncomfortably long time, is it not? No. It's long enough to have a conversation, isn't it? I didn't have a conversation. Is 22 seconds long enough to have a conversation? No. You can't, a human being can't have it a conversation. It wasn't the question, right? Seconds. It was like, did you have a sure conversation? Sure they could. I don't think it's anything of substance. Okay. So okay. Let's well, let's see. If the court didn't indulge the attorney, we shall indulge ourselves here. Uh, but first, let's just take a look at this slide real quick, just to put everything into perspective, okay? The date is January 29th, 2022. This is the, act the night that Mr. O'Keefe died okay so after 12 a.m it's the 29th uh on the 28th they were all at the waterfall bar so here on top we have brian higgins phone brian higgins phone calls brian no i'm sorry brian albert calls brian higgins at 2 35 a.m brian albert calls brian higgins okay Higgins is looking here, ignore, answer, or delete phone records. Those are his options. Now, 2.22.35, Brian Higgins calls Brian Albert back. But they say they never spoke. And they say that although there was 22 seconds there in the phone, call, phone records, that wasn't enough for conversation. So when this next slide starts, we're gonna count 22 seconds and we're gonna see, hold on, not yet, if we can have a conversation with another person, what could we possibly say in 22 seconds? Go. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Uh, tough night, right? Yeah. What's going on today? I don't know. How's your snowplow? It's fine. Did Karen call you back? No, she's been playing games with me. Well, tell her that she needs to make up her mind, okay? All right. And that was it. That was 23 seconds. I don't know if you can see it here. Probably not because it's so dark. But 23 seconds. And we moved back to the butt dials because not only did Brian Albert say that his butt called uh, that his butt called the other Brian, but then the other Brian now is saying his butt called. So it's very confusing with all the butt calls, but let's see how he explains that. My question. 
Is it 22 seconds long enough to have a conversation? I don't agree with it, no. But it is, we just had one, now, right? When you were asked about this and you were shown these records that prior. So now we just saw it was definitely plenty of time to do it, to have a conversation. We could say a couple of things. I don't know what they said, but is it enough time? And the answer is, is yes, it's enough time. So let's see where we, where we go from. What's the question? Please read it for me. Did, he, did you call him back? What's the answer? Yes. Thank you. May I approach? Yes. Highlighted question in the yes, correct? I think it was kind of I must have. Then you were asked, well, the, the answer was yes. And then there was a colloquy back and forth where you spoke over each other's words, right? It was dialogue back and forth about this whole thing, yes. Oh. May I approach? Yes. May I? Yes. You see the pink highlighted question and the pink highlighted answer? Yes. What's the question? Please read it for me. Did, he, did you call him back? What's the answer? Yes. Thank you. May I approach? Yes. You then said a little bit further in that same conversation, I did not have a conversation, correct? I did not have a conversation with anybody. And the question following that was, you just listened to the phone, what someone was telling you? Answer, it's possible that the phone picked up on the other end and nobody said anything. And then I terminated the call, end quote. That's what you said at the under, other hearing under oath, correct? Yes or no? Can I see it? Sure. Let's pause here. Can I, do you have something I can look at to refresh my memory? Asked you questions about where Ms. Reed's SUV If you was. can show me in the, can I see it? Correct. Yes or no? Can I see it? Sure. So can I see the report? Can I see the report? Now, Brian is like, I don't know. I didn't talk to him. My butt called him. I called him back, but then now this time, I don't think I called him back. So when he testified in the past, he said, I did call him back. It's possible somebody picked up on the other end and that I terminated the call. That's the only thing. And then he makes this face. Also, he says he never really thought he hasn't been thinking about it, which is very, very sus, right? Because if you're going through all this and all this is happening and then you're going to say that you haven't really thought about it, you haven't really thought about it, really, but you're going to throw your phone away, you're going to throw your phone away and you haven't really thought about it. So that's not true because you're obviously thinking about it. And then also we have the military base, we have the trash can. We have the SIM card, we have all of the things, but you haven't really thought about it. Sure. Sure. So now this slide here is going to be his reaction. What is happening? I went back to the beginning. It's going to be his reaction to the telling the chief. Okay, so let's just go one by one, right? Did you tell? Chief Berkowitz, that you and Brian Aubrey had a call at 2 a.m. No, well, this is his face, his facial expression. He looks down. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had been with John O'Keefe and you were at the crime scene? Then he looks to the side, to the attorney. Did you tell that you had been flirting with his girlfriend? He says no and looks like, what kind of question is that? Why, why would you ask me something like that, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense for you to ask me like that. Something like that. What did Chief Berkowitz tell you about his knowledge of John O'Keefe's body being found just after 6 a.m.? Objection. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz? Getting hot in here. John O'Keefe. 
and you were at the crime scene the night before? Objection. Looks to the side. Did you inform Chief Berkowitz that you had been with John O'Keefe the night before? Objection. I'll allow it. I believe I may have told him at some point that I saw John at the waterfall. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you'd been at 34 Fairview? I believe I did. Did you tell him that your vehicle was parked just feet away from where John's body was discovered? No, because I didn't know where he was discovered. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you and Brian Albert had had a call at 222 in the morning? Objection. This looks down, avoids eye contact. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had been flirting with John O'Keefe's girlfriend in the weeks prior to his death? Looks to the side and then no. makes a, what kind of Did question Did you ever tell Chief Berkowitz about the nature of your interest in this read? No, I don't believe so. Why would I, right? Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had seen Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Reed the night before and that Ms. Reed had ignored you? Objection. Assisting. Spoking at him. You can break that down, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Ron. I may have just a moment. Rearranges. You indicated just a second ago that when, you, when I asked, did you tell Chief Berkowitz that your Jeep was parked just feet away from where John O'Keefe's body was found, you said, I have no idea where John O'Keefe's body was found, correct? That's correct. You just spoken with Brian Albert, right? He, he said in front of the house. All he said was, John O'Keefe was found in front of the house. He didn't say, right outside on my front lawn. I believe he said he was found out in front of his house, unresponsive. Okay. One second, just to look at this slide real quick where he says, did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had seen Karen and John the night before and she ignored you? These are his faces on that. I feel bad. It does look like he, you know, it's a tough subject for him. He looks a little sad here. Then the next one, which is what we are watching right now, is your Jeep would be just a few feet away from John, correct? Then look at his face. Did you think that any of that was important when talking to the chief of police? He says no. He makes this face with the eyebrows raised. You've been investigated for 15 years. And then he scratches his chin. Would you agree that phones are important in an investigation? He scratches his nose and he answers. I mean, I've used phone data a few times. If he was out in front of his house, then you would know because your Jeep was also parked out in front of his house. Your Jeep would just be feet away from him, correct? Objection. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had texted John O'Keefe to have him come over to 34 Fairview just hours before he was discovered dead in the yard? No. Did you think any of that was important when talking to the Chief of Police of the Canton Police Department? I'll let him have it. No, I didn't. There was, there was no reason to tell him. You've been an investigator for some 15 years and you were a firefighter for years before that, correct? Yes. You're very familiar with some of the tools that are used in conducting modern investigations, correct? Yes. You'd agree that searching electronic devices and phones is an incredibly important investigative tool that modern investigators use, correct? Objection. Right. Are you aware that searching electronic devices is an important part of investigations? Of course. Objection. Are you aware of that, sir? What's the objection? That? I've, I've utilized... Uh, Phone data during the course of my investigations at times, yes. Come on, the answer okay, so is yes. That is obviously phone data and electronic data is an important part of the investigation. Right? Objection. System. Unbelievable that he can't just say yes to that because he is a investigator, special agent, and you're not going to agree right away, yes, 100% that a phone is important in an investigation. You're going to say, I've used it before. I mean, I guess. That is that what we're going to go with here? Is that what we're going to go with here? Right? So these are the face. And next, we're going to go into... You were still having conversations with Kevin Albert at Canton PD, correct? He's going to say not about this. Covering his mouth. And now here's a little part of the what everybody's saying. Book saying that... People de-emphasize or show lack of commitment to their own speech by speaking behind their hands, talking while covering their mouths, or showing limited facial expression. 
People control their countenance and engage in other movement restriction withdrawal behaviors, but they're not committed to what they're saying. So that's what he is going to do when he says he hasn't talked about to Kevin Albert about this. He's going to say not about this and cover his mouth. Let's see it. Around 7, 7.15 in that area. Was there any law enforcement presence there when you arrived? I can't recall specifically. There could have been one police car. I'm not positive. So here's where he's saying uh, the next morning, he has no idea what's going on. But the night before, he knows where the back of the Jeep is, where the side of the Jeep is, which, face, which side is facing. He knows everything about the Jeep. But the next morning, he can't recall. Any officer ever ask you to take a look at your vehicle? At what time? That time. At any, but actually, at any time. Uh, no, I, I. So, did any officer ask you to look at your vehicle? No, right? Because then you're going to say, at what time? You're going to qualify that. No, nobody asked you either way. So, why do you have to say, at what time? Not to my knowledge, no, to nobody from knowledge. law enforcement nobody associated asked with the investigation had ever asked to take a look at my vehicle. So, they certainly didn't ask that day, correct? On the 20. What I'm saying is, I, to my knowledge, <laughs> To your knowledge, has somebody asked, asked you? Right. So that's my point. I'm just what do you trying mean to your knowledge? You're breaking, you, you want to tell me every instance when somebody to could ask To my knowledge, asked nobody Correct. asked okay. me. On the 29th. Um, unless they asked me and I was sleeping? Whether or not your vehicle could be searched. Searched, searched or, or inspected? inspected? What, do you, what do you mean? Either what one. do you mean? Well, I would consider a search the inside of the vehicle more this so. This is so much nervousness. Because again, either one, neither one applies. They didn't ask to search. They didn't ask to inspect. So what you consider search doesn't matter. It just makes you look evasive. Then the outside, I would consider the outside more of an inspection. I would have been happy to show them it. You would have been, but you happened. didn't. I'm asking, did they ask? No. <laughs> they didn't ask to search it. They didn't ask to inspect it. No. So why did you uh, ask? Which what? So which one? With troopers. Who was it that you met with on the 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 third of February? Trooper Proctor and Trooper Bukinik. Did. He now he's gonna to start to get really itchy. He's gonna start Did itching his face a lot. Trooper Butnik asked to inspect your vehicle, otherwise search it. Not to my recollection. And to this day, itches. nobody from Massachusetts State Police has ever indicated that they want to inspect. What kind your of vehicle. answer is that? When did somebody ask you? Not to my recollection. No. When you entered the house that morning, looking down uh, from. Nicole Wallows. Albert, Tim McCabe, Matt McCabe, Brian Albert Jr., and Julie Albert were all there. I'm sorry, had Julie Albert gotten there yet? She came after me. Okay, so at some point... I'm going to pause people... here and just move it along to the next one. Right here. That's correct. You were not assigned to this investigation in any formal capacity, were you? I was not. As a matter of fact, you're a witness in a homicide investigation. That's your only role in this, correct? That's correct, but they're still my friends, yes. And yet you're still having conversations with Kevin Albert at Canton PD while you're at Canton PD, correct? Not about this. And you're having conversations with Chief Berkowitz. Not about this, but let me itch my face a lot. Let me cover my mouth a lot. But definitely we did not talk about this. Of Canton PD while you're at Canton PD, correct? I had conversations with him, but not about this, no. And you're consistently through the day calling <laughs> Brian Albert, aren't you? I had conversations with Brian Albert. Albert, John was found on his lawn. Yes, of course, I had phone conversations with him. I want to take you back for a second to a couple of other <coughs> entries, including one at 357. So that was the not about this slide that he is ultimately covering his mouth. I mean, the covering his mouth should should be universal, right? That it's kind of like it's a subconscious subconscious things, like you know we're saying something, but we are covering as far as we're not confident about what we're talking about. And then we're going to move on to the part where he says, I did not see anything. Let's go. The other evidence in the Sally port related to this case. No. Did you see a bag, a grocery bag with six solo cups there? Objection. <laughs> Let me look at my attorney. Did you see anything that seemed out of the ordinary there? All I would do is use that as a cut through. I did not see anything. And 
look down, looks at someone. Are you aware that at five, well, let me ask you this. You and Chief Berkowitz were moving in and through, at least in some parts of the day, in and through Canton PD together, correct? At some points we might have been together. I'm not, I mean, we, we weren't together all day. Matter of fact, he was also in the Sally Port around the same time you were, correct? I don't recall that, no. But the records would reflect that, right? The records that are in front of you? Objection. Oh, it's getting hot in here. You were in the Sally Port the last time you're logged into the Sally Port. It's 407. Do you remember seeing Chief Berkowitz at Sally Port 414? No, and, and if that says that I'm logged, that, that could be me cutting so through. It's all I'm asking you. Eh, I'm not asking, we're you not asking you all I'm asking that. where you were. I don't know where I was at that specific time. Well, you walked into the Sally Port. You know that. If I walked in, I Correct. cutting through, yes. Right. Was if I walked in, I was just cutting through. But Chief you don't Berkowitz remember. Sally Port 414. Not that I recall, no. Was he there at 430? I, I don't remember ever seeing him in the Hold on, let me make it back to normal now because I think there's going to be some stuff for us to look at. Sally Port, no. Was he there at 433? I don't remember ever seeing Chief Berkowitz in the Sally Port. At 450. Jackson. Close his eyes down. Sustain. Let's move through this. Takes his head. Finally, was he there at 536 and 37 seconds at the same time Karen Reed's vehicle was delivered? I don't remember. There we go. Now is the shaking head, closing eyes, looking down, looks at the attorney. That's what it is. It's kind of like. Are uh, we in trouble here? Like, when is this going to be over? Like, when is this going to be over? They're grilling me. They're grilling me, and I can't take it anymore. So this is where uh, the, the next slide, right here. Were you in the Sally Port when Karen's card was delivered? You were where? Oh, the, the video evidence is actually coming up. We haven't gotten there yet, but he's just getting more and more anxious. It's kind of like, like nervous, and it's kind of like he's almost doing this with his collar, like, I need some air. I need some oxygen, please. So let's see where we are with it. You're aware that there's video surveillance feeds at, in the Sally Port garage, correct? That's correct, yes, around the building. Were you in the Sally Port at 536 when the car was delivered? I don't have any recollection of that, no. He doesn't have any recollection. It's not yes, I was, or no, I wasn't. He just doesn't have any recollection. It's one thing to say I don't remember, it's another thing to say no, I was not there. I don't remember being there, no. Is it possible that you could have been there when that car was delivered? I don't believe I was, no. You don't Is believe it possible? You I don't believe I was, no. You're aware that the video surveillance feed from the Sally Port garage at or around 536, the precise time <laughs> when the car was delivered, it's just missing, right? Objection. And he looks at the attorney like, I'm not answering that. So the attorney is over there, his attorney, I, I'm assuming, and he's just looking at him like with fire in his eyes. Like, I don't want to answer that. Please help me. Save me. Please save me. You're going to go to sidebar. It's almost over, guys. Did you receive a flurry of phone calls from Brian Albert and Chief Berkowitz? Um, indicating that some taillight pieces or a taillight piece had been recovered at 34 Fairview later that evening. Objection. Did you receive a call at all without telling me what the conversation consisted of around 6, 12 PM from Brian Albert? I don't, I don't know what day you're referring to. The 29th. No, I don't remember any phone calls like that. Do you remember three minutes later getting another call from Chief Berkowitz at 6.16 p.m. that lasted about five minutes and 15 seconds? No. He looks at the attorney, squints everything. His whole face is like approach? Yes. doing things. By this time, I'm slouching. I'm like... 
I've Peter been here for a minute. 612, 616. Let's see if that refreshes your recollection. Are you referring to the judge? He's just like, get me out of here. 612 and 616. Okay, I see those. Yes. Are you guys the doing call something? Six twelve. That Brian Albert made to you for a duration of one minute and seven seconds. Correct. Yes. And right after that, there was a call from Chief Berkowitz. Well, Brian calls Brian. At then Chief calls Brian. Six, Sixteen. That lasted four five minutes, minutes later. Sus. Seconds, correct. Yes. May I approach. Yes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are they telling you that taillight pieces? had been found at the location. Objection. Oh, he looked to the attorney, but he was like, yeah, wait, should I answer that? Should I not answer that? Okay, so what is happening? Why is there so many, why are there so many holes in this case? Why is not as simple as Karen Reed is on trial for DUI and vehicular homicide? intentional so this is the proof this is the case against her why do we have this guy throwing his phone away why do we have the other guy throwing his phone away we're holding the, the, the why is this so many things happening so here is what they were talking about right now his card his key card granted access at 337 oh i'm sorry 357 uh 407 he was granted access to the Sally port where the solo cups are with the evidence and the car was. Karen Reed SUV was delivered nine minutes before. So could it be that Karen Reed's, Karen Reed's SUV is delivered. Somebody lets him know he's there in nine minutes. He walks in. Then four to six, about two hours later, Brian Albert calls Brian Higgins. Hey, so what's up with the evidence? Did you get anything? Did you see anything? Then he says, yeah, whatever. Uh, and then four minutes later, the chief calls Brian Higgins. Then. When Alan Jackson asks, were you provided information by your friend regarding the investigation and then communicating to Brian Albert? Then he says, oh, maybe. Let's didn't have any information on the investigation. May I have just a moment, Your Honor? Sure. We are in slow motion for a reason. Look at his face. He's feeling the pressure here. Trying to keep calm. His eyes are all over the place, looks at the attorney, and the face is like, oh, shit. You were not this is not going this well. Case, but in any formal capacity until five days later, correct? That, that sounds about right. Uh, uh. So that was the face he made to his attorney, like, oh. Like, you know, almost, he almost went like, like, crap. You know, that's kind of how I saw it, like, crap. So. And anything that was in it. Correct? Um, I wouldn't need anything in it. It was only after all that that Michael Proctor thought that you were worthy of a conversation. Objection. I'll, I'll, rephrase it. I'll rephrase it. It was only after all of that that you were interviewed by Michael Proctor and Trooper Buechner, correct? I wasn't interviewed to the following days. That's correct. There we go. Scratch the face and lip compression. So let's go to the slide and find that slide so we can go over it. Here we go. You had access to the evidence area. I wouldn't need anything in there. That's not the answer, right? Did you have access to the evidence area? Yes, no. The answer he gives, I wouldn't need anything in there. So again, evasive. Uh, I wasn't interviewed until the following day. Then he scratches his face. 
and then he does the little biting down, like he bites his whole fish down, which I have it here. Attempt to hide many intense emotion of emotions of sadness, fear, or anger. And again, the scratch in the face, we know it's the pacifying, it's the relieving, releasing anxiety anxiety. I can't even speak anymore. It's been three hours. <laughs> and that he's just releasing the anxiety because he has no he has nowhere to go. You're under pressure, you know. It's just fire, fire, fire after you and you're like, like touching whatever you can to release that anxiety. Yes. Thank you. Does that refresh your recollection to what your testimony was? Under You're so tired. Too. 2023? I do. And you said, if that's what Chief Berkowitz told me, if I listen, I didn't do anything wrong in this. Correct? That was a statement I made. Yes. And... Uh, we're going to touch our nose again, huh? That is the statement I made. So let's read this one. I didn't do anything wrong. That was a statement I made. Nose touching, it may consist of several light rubs below the nose. It may be quick, imperceptible, like a mouth guard gesture. It can be used both by the speaker to disguise his own deceit and by the listener who doubts the speaker's words. So. It could, so it's not being used by the, the speaker, it's being used by the listener who doubts the speaker's words. I'm gonna make it a little faster, this part, so we can get through it. We Why can did just you say, through. listen, I didn't do anything wrong with this. Objection. Why'd you say that? Because I thought they were being accusatory and I was trying to explain what was going on. And what I had said over that was, I can't, I, I believe what I said, something to the effect, I can't be 100% positive. And then when I, I went on to say, it's, 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 it's probable. I was trying to explain how the phone probable. calls came in. I've had time to reflect about it after that, since that testimony. Huh? And both, that information about the like that was found huh? was provided by each person. I didn't provide any information to anybody. Next you, question? Uh -huh. You said, look, I Sounds like a lot of blah, 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 Because blah. it looks like you and Ken Berkowitz were colluding to provide information to Brian Albert, correct? Yes. Is that correct? Absolutely not correct. That's but wrong. You knew that was going to look like collusion, which is why you said, look, I didn't do anything wrong in this. Objection. Objection sustained. Mr. Higgins, if you wanted to get rid of, and you've dealt with cell phones and, and electronic devices in your career many, many times, correct? Over my career, yes. Uh, you've probably even written search warrants for them, things of that nature, right? Yes. Um, if you wanted to destroy evidence on your Ooh. cell phone, what kind of steps might you take to do that? Objection. If you wanted to just get why rid of can't information he answer on your that? cell phone, uncoverable, what steps might you take? Objection. Sustained. Do you know Why? how to get rid of information on your cell phone? We want to know. Yes. You can answer that. Do I know how to get rid of information? Yes. Do I mean, you? I think there's different ways that you can possibly you can wipe your phone. Well, you threw your else? phone away. Um, you can wipe your phone. It, factory, factory reset. Factory reset. Factory reset might be one. Wiping your phone, taking the SIM card out. I, I don't know that the SIM card is going to take information that's on the phone. Throw it I'll, in the trash. That might be one avenue. You can break the SIM card in half. Or it, could, it, it could. Yes. Um, you know, the SIM card stores an enormous amount of data that the phone just break. No, I don't know that. Okay. Uh, you can also, if you take a SIM card out, just get rid of the phone somehow, right? Just destroy it. Right? Yes. Um, okay. Might even consult with some kind of an expert to help no. learn how to permanently erase things from a phone. Like a forensics expert, for instance. You Objection. consult it with an expert? On Saturday, and he looks January to 29th, the side um, like his attorney's like, just save day, him. Much of the morning, rather. At sir, Friday. sir, if you did those things, it looks suspicious. Don't look at the attorney. He can't save you now. Tell him in the rest of the day. Variously at Captain PD. You agree with that, correct? No. You said I spent much of the morning at Brian Albert's house? Correct. In other words, you went over there at whatever it was, 7.50, 8 o'clock, something like that, and then until that Whatever it was. No, I got over there around 7 o'clock, and I was there less than an hour. I wasn't there most of the day. Okay, I never correct. went back there. So you spent time at Brian Albert's house, then much of the rest of the day at Captain PD, correct? Yes. And then the very next day, that Sunday, you called a friend of yours named Matt Kelch, didn't you? I, yeah, he's my best friend. Yes. And he's a special agent with the FBI, isn't he? No, he's not. Was he then? He's so he's not a special agent with the FBI. Let's see what Never he been is. A special agent with FBI. He's a special agent with ATF. My mistake. My mistake. I thought he was with the FBI. He's a he, federal special agent. He's a coworker of mine. Yes. Which makes him a federal special agent, right? An ATF agent. Yes. And does he work for or have access to the regional that. computer forensics lab? Yes, he works over there. Okay, that's the FBI regional forensics regional computer forensics lab, correct? Yes. That's how. But he's not an FBI agent. But he works with the FBI forensics lab. But he's not an FBI agent. He's my coworker, and he's my best friend. So I went to see him. 
reflected correctly. You and me both. So you, re you reflected it correctly. So Matt Kelch is an ATF agent who works at the FBI. And look at the tongue. The tongue right. is, yes. and he is like a prolonged tongue jut that he does there. He's an expert in digital forensics, is he not? He has a level of expertise more than myself, yes. And he's one of your best friends. He is my best friend. You spoke to him about the death of John O'Keefe, did you not? Yes. And you asked him for a personal favor, sort of off the books. The FBI! Right. Yeah. In that form, I'll assist you. Did you ask him for a personal favor? No. Did you ask him to show you or consult with you how to pull things off of your phone that you decide to get off your phone? I asked him how I... So it wasn't a personal favor, it was a work-related favor to get rid of your phone? So he does a prolonged tongue jut here when they're talking about the FBI. And then I have uh, him looking at the attorney, like, get my attorney. And Yannette is just like laughing with Karen, like, all oh, he's done now. He was using the federal resources to delete your love taxes. Of course he's in trouble. Then let's see what else he gets here. I could pull text strings off my cellular telephone for the purpose of providing them to law enforcement. This was not so messed up. Look at how nervous he gets. Objection. Objections everywhere. Looks at the attorney and he's like, No, Your Honor. Next question. But you asked your friend to utilize his resources to teach you how to extract certain information off your phone. Is that what you did? I asked him if it was possible to get this off, if there was, if there was a method to get this off my phone so I could provide it to law enforcement. And that information was selected by you, correct? P two particular text threads, yes. So the whole eva evasiveness, you know, it just, it just gives me Jennifer McCabe's vibe. And it doesn't look good, guys, because why are you doing all this? Why, why, why are you doing all this? And why aren't you being upfront about it? Do you have a friend that works for the FBI? No, he works for ATF. Okay. Is he, does he works, does he have access to the FBI forensics lab? Yes, he works there. Okay. So is he a federal agent? No, he's my coworker, which means he's a federal agent. Yes, it means he's a federal agent. So this whole going back and forth and in circle, just tell the, yes, I have a friend. He's a, fe yes, he is. I didn't know. I didn't want to turn my whole phone in. And I wanted to turn it just the text messages. So I did ask my best friend who works in the forensics department to show me how to do it. And then I gave it now. <laughs> how are you going to explain the rest? <laughs> so far, I was helping you out, right? I have a friend and then it's normal. But next, the next thing I, I can't help you with. I, I can't. And then you did that. I did do that. That's and correct. That's what you turned over to the police. That's correct. And any other information would still be on your phone, ending in five four two one. Correct. Well, that information stayed on my phone. I just took those strings what off phone? and provided them to the Mass State Police. Right. So where's your phone? I do not have that phone anymore. You've destroyed that phone, haven't you? No, I threw the phone away. I didn't destroy well, it. I threw it away. Phone, isn't it? Uh, no answer. I had every right Making to do head? that. I didn't ask you about your rights. I asked you what you did. Objection. Sustained. You destroyed the phone by removing the SIM card. Ah, Lolly's like, <sighs> sustained. <laughs> Lolly's yeah. dead. Did you pull the SIM card out? <coughs> tell us. Tell us. Tell us. Tell us. the SIM card out of your phone? Did you? Honor to the, uh, Your Honor, honor, to the best of my recollection. Your Honor. If, if I did take the SIM card out, I would have. I would have? What? When I threw it away, did if you? I was going to take it out, did I would you? break it or cut it. You would have or you did. But I did not wipe the phone. I did not take anything else off it. But if I was going to throw the phone away, that's what I would have done. Okay. You know, it's an ATF. The judge is like, okay. Electronic. Does that make sense? sense? You judge? When you pull the SIM card out and break it and then throw the, throw the phone away and the SIM card away, you don't need to wipe the phone. Objection. Sustained. Don't save him. And that's it. Oh, Josh. One more question. I can do this in 30 seconds. Go, um, Jackson. Okay. Go, Jackson. You were aware we that, were. The, that there was a court order that you not alter, delete, or destroy, or in any way manipulate your phone or the electronic data associated with it, correct? Objection. As to what date? As of September 23rd, I'm sorry, September 30th, 2022. Objection. Help. I don't Help. believe that's what the court order was. Help. I think it's been. Make a quick offer of proof. That's exactly what it was that he was notified. Oh, oh, oh. What? 
I'm not even going to. I don't even know what to say. So, so where is your phone? Where is your phone, Mr. Higgins? Uh, I didn't destroy it. I threw it away. It's different. Where is your phone, Mr. Higgins? <gasps> Unbelievable. The, the, the face, the, just the, I don't know what you guys are worried about. Then we have the court order for him to not destroy anything was on September 30th. But on September 29th, as a coincidence, that's when he changed his phone. He switched carriers. And remember, Brian Alberg had the same court order, but the day before, he switched phones and got rid of his old phone. But this is just a coincidence. Don't look... Don't look into anything. Don't look at anything here. There is absolutely nothing to see here. Nothing to see. But I want to know, where's your phone? <laughs> Let's just watch one more time. Where's your phone? On how I could pull the text string with John O'Keefe in the defendant. He walked me through the process, how to use the machine. And then you did that. You did, I did that. Do that. Okay. That's so we can just get the phone. That's correct. And the in... other information would still be on your phone, ending in 5421, correct? Well, that information stayed on my phone. I just took those strings oh, off. Oh, stayed in your phone. Okay, let's the get the phone. Right. So where's your phone? I do not have that phone anymore. <sighs> it was a bombastic day uh, on Friday in court and this is it for today guys just just three hours just three hours I hope you enjoyed it please help me to grow my channel subscribe share comment do all the things and God bless you have a great day and I'll see you next time